Sorry, no musical lead-in. I've got Chad over here. I'll leave that up. And I was going to start with something I thought was easy. But now that I'm looking at this, this isn't round. That's going to throw me off. And these stitches, they kind of stop abruptly right along that seam line. And all these holes in here, I don't know. This could be problematic. So I'm going <laughs> to start by making a ball. Let's see if I've got the ability to do that. So I'm going to go over here. Yeah, we're going to grab Sphere 3D. I am capturing the right thing, right? Yes, okay. Move that down. Okay, so we'll start with the sphere. Go in edit mode. Uh, let's go in here to texture. I've got a texture already loaded, so texture import. Grab the file. So I've got three baseballs here. Um, I'm going to add it to my spotlight with this button here. And we're going to make this a little bigger. And you can see where it goes to pure blacks. There's little, uh, it kind of goes to... Um, transparent. I'm going to take this. I'm going to take that intensity to the right a little bit uh, just so those pure blacks don't go transparent. Not a huge deal in this case, but just in case that's something that help needs you need to fix. Um, hello. Thanks for showing up. Let's let's see if I can make a baseball. I, I think I can. I think I can. So uh, we have a sphere here. I have, I'm going to go ahead and turn on X symmetry because this is a symmetrical object generally, I think. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to end up zero meshing this anyways, just uh, based on where the seam lines are, I think. So I'm going to put my stitches along those seam lines, and it's also going to be kind of compressed along those seam lines. So let's figure out how I need to divide this thing up, because, it's again, it's not going to be a perfect circle, and I'm going to have to split this thing along seam. So I'm just going to start with just a regular old sphere. Uh, make polymesh 3D if I haven't done that already, and then hit Control D a couple times, because I'm going to be transferring this image to my baseball here. Uh, I also need to know where my midline is just to kind of get an idea of where we are in space. I'm gonna switch this over. Eh, I'll leave it here. I'm gonna put this a little bit darker. Uh, well, let's do this. I'm gonna go up here, I'm gonna go to Subtool, I'm gonna turn on this little paintbrush icon. Uh, and you can also go here to color fill object with white. It'll just, all the verts by default are filled with uh, white color. And then I'm gonna go down here to a darker color and right down the middle, I'm just going to hold down shift and just make sure that I have a, uh, let's turn on RGB, turn off Z add, or you can go to BPA for your paint brush, which is just standard brush with RGB turned on. And we're going to go hold down shift and pull that straight down the middle and then go all the way around my object. I, of course, I could go in here also to maybe transform, activate symmetry. Let's look at our floor, make sure we're Z forward, X to the left and the right. And let's see if we can do like transform, activate symmetry in the... I think it's the X direction, radial count, crank that up. There we go. So you can maybe even put a line down the middle this way, but I don't know if it's exactly in the middle, but this is a cool way to kind of do radial symmetry like that. Anyway, um, another way we might be able to do this is going here, let's see, texture, transform, let's again, turn on X symmetry. Um, if I go over here and hold down uh, Control and Alt, I'm just kind of unmasking down that center line, I think that'll work. I'm going to go ahead and blur this out and then sharpen it up. No, this is just going to be kind of a janky midline, but that's okay. So control tap to invert that. Control alt F is my hot key for color fill object. And now I've got a midline on here. And you know what? We might as well, eh, I think, I think this midline will be okay. So what are we doing? We're going here to color. We have white color selected again. I'm going to turn this RGB intensity down. We're going to go to color fill object. I'm just going to knock that back just a little bit. So there's my midline. Here I am Z forward. I'm going to hit shift Z and I'm going to pick which direction this ball is going to go. I'm going to go ahead and turn my floor off and it's going to be something like this. I don't think I'll need to turn on, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, like perspective or anything like this. I think just a regular old orthographic ball in this view will be fine. And because I have X symmetry turned on, so again, I'm gonna go to my standard brush or your paint brush, RGB turned on, X symmetry turned on, and over here underneath samples, oh, spotlight projection turned on. Now I can start painting where my seam lines are gonna go. And the reason I have three baseballs on here is just to make sure that I have everything I need. Um, you know, I'm not gonna paint over that midline just in case I need it. So we'll put this here and then it's like, okay, I've got my midline and then this is going to turn this way, all right? And also I'll match this one up 
And is this one where it's going to get weird because I need to have <laughs> some sort of, or am I looking at the wrong side of the ball? This is where I don't really know. And I don't have a baseball, um, but I think we'll be close enough. I'm just going to continue this. Uh, oops, standard brush, spotlight projection. Oh, it's, it's a wider ball. And we'll just continue this here. And I think it maybe turns this way like so, and we'll match this up-ish. And I think I can probably extrapolate what I need for the rest of the ball that I don't have. Uh, in fact, I might even be able to just flip it over. Let's see if I can do that. Let's go back to Shift-Z, and then if they are very similar, I'm going to flip this over this way. I don't know if they're going the wrong direction. So, okay, I think I might have enough. If I need to, I can also go in here, let's say texture import. I'm going to grab another, let's see here, baseball, PNG, baseball, crop. Where is that one? Save image as. Oh, there it is. Let's try this one. Texture, grab it. This is from Wikipedia. We'll scale this one down. This one we don't really need anymore, maybe, so we'll just go ahead and exit out of that one. And then hit Z, and then here's the backside, I think. Or wait, no. Yeah, I knew this was gonna be... Anyway, so uh, if I wanna continue these stitches, one thing I can try to do is I can go over here and let's do uh, BX for our extractor brush and I'm going to kind of roll over this and then we're just going to continue this up and around right through here. So we're going to hit G on my keyboard and we're just going to roll over this texture here and then we're just going to continue this. Now I think it'll work uh, if, if for some reason, because you can do this with height information too, I'm going to control tap this latest point in history and then do that again, just G and then we're gonna say, I'm gonna, oops, G, and then steal this, and that'll transfer it to a height information, the alpha don't need, I'm just worried about the texture information now. And I'm just gonna continue this here. So we're gonna start from that stitch and just kinda continue this onwards. And that'll give me, hopefully, the number of stitches and figure, fill out the rest of this here. I knew this was gonna be more of a pain than it looked like. Um, oh, and you know what else? We could actually turn on, so we have X symmetry on. Let's go in here to transform everything X and Z. Nope, X and Y symmetry. So while we were doing this, we can go ahead and get both sides. No, I guess not. Well, let's do this. Transform X and we'll just do both sides. So you get a stitch here and you get a stitch here. Does that make sense? We have our stitches generally placed on here about the direction they should go. And now I think I can start dividing this up. Whew, okay. Um, Astros are Phillies. Oh, let's go Phillies. Even though I'm here in Texas. Nice. You probably made a better baseball than I'm gonna make. <laughs> um, yeah, you know what? We'll do some crazy stuff with this baseball once I get the basics figured out. So, okay, we got this thing. We got the general direction and the pattern and where the stitches need to go and how many stitches. Okay, we've, we've done it-ish. I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this off just in case I need to go back to that for reference. Hopefully my sound's okay. I think it is. I'll lean away from the mic. So, uh, we have this. Now we need to go through and determine, like, okay, number one, let's simplify this ball and let's go ahead and simplify it with the fact that we're going to need to use this seam line uh, not only for the modeling portion but also maybe placing our stitches it might be useful too so i'm going to go through here and i'm going to say control uh, we're just going to kind of mask along that seam line and we're going to turn one side into a poly group and another side into a poly group and then we're going to zero mesh with those poly groups and that's going to give us new geometry where the border of the geometry is going to follow this seam line exactly and then once it's done that, I'm actually going to go through and kind of mush it into shape. Actually, you know what? I bet maybe polished by polished by features 
might actually do a little bit of the job for me. Okay, I'm starting to see through where I could talk about some technique in an interesting way. We'll see. Uh, so again, we're gonna go through here, and if I need to, I can turn off this little paintbrush icon and we can make sure that we're not too wobbly with this. Although, again, when we go polish by features, it is going to polish this polygroup border anyway, and there's ways we can smooth it out. But again, we'll just kind of go through and say, okay, we got a mask on here. Um, go down here to geometry, I'm gonna delete lower because we're gonna be slicing through this geometry. In fact, if I turn on polyframe and we'll turn on skin shader four, let's go down here to, um, edge loop and then there's an edge loop mass border so there's a border here and I can slice through that mass border uh, with a poly group and the cool thing about this is it can kind of give you a little bit of a smoother line it's not really smooth but we'll fix that in a bit uh, so now we have our seam where we need to go and then these polarized caps and stuff boy did I go like like I had symmetry on but in the weirdest possible way maybe yeah I don't even know what I was thinking you know what, we'll, we'll get through this. So we have this here. Uh, if I do wanna smooth this, just this line out and not the rest of the ball, a couple different ways we can do that. One easy way is going here to masking. I'm gonna say mask by our groups and then we can actually grow that a little bit maybe and then control tab to invert that. And then again, deformation polished by features. A feature is a crease or a polygroup border. So we have a polygroup border. We have everything else masked except for that border and a little bit extra around it. And we'll go in here and say, uh, drag that to the right. Um, and that's going to maintain the volumes of the ball. If you don't want to maintain the volumes, which I don't think we will in a second, you can turn this open circle and then that'll really polish it, but it'll also kind of start changing the shape of your object, uh, which in this case, I think we might. And you see it kind of dimples in a little bit. I think that was from this one here, although even polish might do that. So anyway, uh, we have a slightly smoother border. So we have X symmetry on. We're gonna go in here to a Z remesher now, and we're gonna say Z remesher, uh, adapt the size down to zero. We want nice, even quads. We don't need to build in any extra geometry around these edges. And then we're gonna say keep groups because we wanna keep them. Smooth groups, in this case, it would be okay to keep on. I can go ahead and turn this off because I think they're already pretty smooth. We sliced through this. If you had something like this, where you just hit Control W and it's like super aliased, uh, here's a fun thing. Go in here to the comma key, brush, element OPQRS, smooth. There's a uh, smooth groups in here. And if you hold down shift and then go down here to the smooth brush modifiers, you can actually change the weighted smooth mode to get the same thing. It's uh, groups is six, uh, groups border is six. So we'll say five, six. And now you can literally go in here and smooth just the polygroup border. So you can smooth that out. Or you can do our trick where you mask and smooth. Or when you go in here and say Ziri Mesh, keep groups, you can say smooth groups up rather than down, and it'll actually smooth that out for you. So a couple different ways. Anyway, we don't need to do that. So it's already, our groups are already pretty smooth. X symmetry's turned on. Keep groups, smooth groups down to zero, blah, blah, blah. Um, we're gonna go from 131,000 down to five-ish, and that's fine, and we'll hit Ziri Mesh. Cool, cool, let me get got up a uh, upgrade my antique PC. What system? System Spectacular. Uh, system Spectacular, I would recommend. Uh, I mean, I don't know if I can recommend. I can tell you what I got. Workstation. I'm building a new one as we speak, but my most recent is this one, the 3970X. Copy link address here. There you go. You can check that out, and then any of the other specs. I don't think, mm, as of right now, most of my specs haven't changed. So all this right in this area is, I think, what I've got. And that's seven eight crack, of course. Yeah, that looks right. So, um, oh wait, no, I don't have these Dell monitors. I have, uh, oh no, wait, I do have. Okay, yeah, yep, that's right. So. You can check that out, and though, and uh, I mean, if you need like a ZBrush only machine, um, I'm not, sh I don't know that that's like the best ZBrush only, but as far as like ZBrush and then Unreal and rendering and uh, simulations and stuff like that, it's pretty, it's a pretty good machine. So anyway, we've remeshed this, we've got this, um, and again, if I now, when we were talking about it not being a sphere, see how it kind of like is round and then it hits this corner and kind of. Uh, goes down, I think we can achieve that by going in here. Uh, well, first of all, we could also go in here, zero mesh half, keep groups again, and just keep hitting half. If you wanna keep, if you wanna go down to like almost a game res, you can just keep hitting half, and that'll be what you get. Um, I'll go back 
Yeah, you know what? Let's go. Let's go pretty low. If I need to go high, I can always subdivide up, right? Hmm, that might be too low. So uh, I've got my geometry here, so we can put our seam lines along here, and we can split this up if we need to. We can use this for our stitches. Uh, I am going to go down here, so we can see if we can get this to kind of flatten out where it should. I'm going to go over here again to deformation, and again, if I do polish by features close circle, and I tap this, it'll it'll maintain, it'll smooth out my polygroup border, but kind of maintain my volume. If I go open circle, and I'm just tapping, I'm not, you can grab and pull and it'll really smooth it, but if you just tap it once, it'll slowly start giving you that kind of round and then down. Uh, I don't know that it's great, I think the geometry is kind of packing too much geo in here and it's maybe not getting those sides, so I might have to go in here manually and just hold down shift. Here's the thing too, if you hold down shift and smooth, that's the normal smooth algorithm. We'll go back into our brush menu here. There is a smooth, uh, you know what, it's not even in there. It's under BS, BS, smooth brushes. And here is smooth, smooth alt. So BSA is smooth alt, that's alternate. And the same thing as this, where when you polish by features closed circle, it's gonna maintain your volumes. If you open circle, it just demolishes your volumes and really smooths the hell out of it. So your default algorithm, you hold down shift to smooth, it'll just, see how I'm just losing mass like crazy right here? However, if you hold down shift and start smoothing and then let go of shift, it'll spread that geo out over the existing volume. Um, so that's just a, uh, that's the alt smooth right there. Um, good for some other things too and that's also uh, over here in the weighted smooth mode um, so when i hold down shift also you're going to see normally i have this set the weighted smooth mode of one which is smooth stronger um, there we go there we go so that kind of gives us our kind of flat on the sides and then kind of pinched on the border shape that i'm kind of looking for i think that's close enough sorry this is a uh, this is just crazy um, am I, man, am I a cousin of Eminem? <laughs> I, you know what, I feel like I'm not quite there this morning. I'm a little slow and I can't even, I'm having a hard time figuring out how I'm going to make this baseball. So, um, maybe not a ZBrush rap god this morning. Uh, ZBrush good for creating car body concepts like those Gran Turismo sports trophy icons sort of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, in fact, if we go... I think there's a whole page, industry, automotive design, final concept, shapes, controlled surfaces, tech corner, making, yeah, I don't know, maybe check this out, there might be something interesting in there, I don't know that it has a ton of stuff about making cars, but I'm sure you can find um, some things as far as like, yeah, getting those, those shapes at least, or at least getting your idea in the round and then use whatever you want to kind of finish it out or do your crazy hard surface modeling stuff. Um, can you put smooth groups brush to a hotkey? Yeah, ooh, you know what? I want to say smooth is always going to be your alt alternative brush. Your shift is always going to go to your smooth. So if you were to go in here, so to assign a hotkey to a brush, just go in here, hold down control alt, tap any smooth brush, and then assign a hotkey to it. it you might be able to, but it'll just swap, but it'll just swap out your smooth. Yeah, or what you could do, uh, you can see how I have move my head you can see I have a skin shader right here oh uh, you can go in here to preferences uh, da, 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 what I'm looking for config enable customize and then if we go up here to brushes we've been doing some like here's smooth brush so I'm gonna grab our B S oops so I'm gonna tap smooth alt and then go to BS I'm just gonna go back to my regular uh, or if we you know, want to use smooth cloth, which is basically a uh, smooth brush with min connected set to one. Uh, BS, go back to my regular smooth brush. So I've put, while I've done that, I've got these little extra ones here. And the reason my icons are so small, sorry, I go off on a little tangent here. Uh, it's under interface, uh, do, 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 Z modeler, UI palette, I, UI. Uh, you're going to see wide buttons and turned off. So you can turn that off hit store config and then every time you open up ZBrush you have small buttons. 
Uh, and then when you've done that, or you don't even have to do that, you can have wide buttons up here, it's not a big deal. However, uh, now if I want to say, oh, I always use my smooth alt a lot, hold down control alt and just drag it into your interface, and like, oh, I want to use smooth cloth a lot too, drag it in your interface, oh, my paintbrush, I use that a lot, just go ahead and drag it down here, go to preferences, disable customize, uh, and then you want to go to here into preferences, store config, and then every time you start up ZBrush, you'll have these little icons over here. Uh, same thing with this like PAV custom menu, you can sign that to a hotkey, so I use that all the time. In fact, if you want to know more, um, let's see, created. Uh, this guy right here, intro to ZBrush, new and updated. In here is like, a, let me say control F interface. Custom interface and menus is video 42. You can check that out here. And then also on my station page, same deal. Look for that weirdo right here. And then, um, you know, right up here in the corner you can go through and watch those as well as all the what's new all these little folded down corners all the new what's new stuff so uh, not new actually um, it's been a while but you can check those out um, <laughs> what am I, am I listening to anything lately I'm trying to remember like the last music I listened to God, I haven't listened to music in forever I just feel like a am I just a sad person if I miss anything, I, I apologize. Um, is ZBrush good for creating car bodies? Okay. Um, yeah, we're getting there. Uh, can you put smooth groups? Yes, yeah, so I'm not sure, but maybe. Uh, trouble making rocks and leaves for the environment. I asked somebody to use trim sheets, but they said, no, can you please generally say, what's the best way to approach rocks? Oh, man. Um, let's load up Unreal. I'll show you how I approach rocks. Actually, I don't even need to do that. I got a video for you. How I do rocks is exactly how I do rocks in this video, which is just download them. Uh, let's see, there it is. Get full resolution 3D models from Megascan. So I'm gonna copy this link and then just grab those rocks, those ZBrush rocks. In fact, we can, I'll load this up and uh, we can kind of play around maybe with that a little bit. So let me scooch this down here. Uh, transform. You know what? We'll just make a uh, you know project name. Oh come on, come on. Location, browse open, cancel, games blank. Don't need starter content. My project two desktop. Great, perfect. Thank you, Unreal. So well, that's opening. Let me let me uh, get back here. Um, can you get two spheres lined on top of each other and add gravity to the top? Yeah. Uh, so for example, I can say W, control, drag this up. I'm gonna say split mass points. Whoa. Sorry. Here. Oop, here. So anyway, uh, I've got this. I'm gonna say uh, split mass points. So this is, an, you know, I've got two balls here. And then I wanna go in here to my dynamics menu and then I want to say gravity turn on maybe turn it down a little bit because this is fairly low res uh, collision volume on because I want to collide onto this volume here and then run simulation however this isn't I don't know oh is it colliding to the floor no floor is down there floor collision I guess it's just kind of um, so there you go you got it <laughs> you got this ball uh, collided with that one. Uh, of course, you can go in here and you can like crank your firmness up and have it just kind of bounce and slide, you know, on there. So depending on what the result you want to get. However, if you're talking about like, can I put these two and kind of mush them together? That I don't know. I don't know if it would work that well. You can also go to BTC brush transform cloth and you can just literally just like move, blah, 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 move it around and kind of deform it. Um, now he's got a cool little hat. But, um, yeah, so kind of. Yeah, basketballs. Uh, and you know what? I even made a basketball for one of my other models. So I could, I would just import that. <laughs> I could call John. I should have done that. Uh, my uh, two different micropolys on the same mesh. You know what? I think micropolys are one and done. You can do nano mesh. So if you go in here to uh, BI brush insert industrial parts, hit. Um, it's not going to be great because these aren't f square filling, but uh, you could make square filling things. Um, you know what? Whatever. So I'm going to go in here just to kind of show you real quick. So brush 
go in here to create, I'm gonna say create nano mesh brush from this brush. So now I've got an extra brush in here with Z modeler set up so I can hover over a face and say insert nano mesh, polygroup all, I've got all these to choose from. I can go in here and say, eh, it's Phillips type. So if I just do it on the polygroup, I can do this and then I can go over here to this polygroup and I can choose another thing and I can fill all these faces with that object there. And then of course you can go in here and you can swap these out with your nano mesh properties, which is right here. Um, and if you do want these to fill the square, I think if you say fill and you set the size to one, it will actually constrain it to the face. So if you had like a square object, let's go to index zero and do the same fill size of one. Um, it, that should generally get it to fit on that square. So instead of micro poly, you could use nano mesh uh, and then you would just say inventory one to mesh and then you do a weld. So uh, geometry modified topology weld points and that can kind of get you that result. Um, but to your point, so we turn nano mesh off and we say, um, that's that under D, 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 D. Uh, let's close all this down. Dynamic subdivision, turn this on. We say micro poly on, I think it's basically like it's one and done. It's like you have this one on all the polygons. However, having said that, so it's like here, I've got this all knit. You could go in here, if, if you don't mind doing this, uh, we can duplicate this off and then go in here. I'm gonna turn micro poly off. You could literally just say, let's kill that. Uh, for this one, this duplicate, you could say, okay, I want micro poly on this one, control shift tap, split hidden. So now you've got two objects and then you can say, yeah, I want knit on that one and I want, um, I don't know, wires on this one. And now you've got a little yarn ball. Now granted, they're probably not gonna weld up, but even if you're using two micro polys, probably wouldn't weld up anyway. So there's that way maybe. So delete, delete, micro poly off, dynamic off. Okay, so we've got a baseball. Let me get a little forward momentum here. Um, give me a sec, I'll hop back to the I don't have really a big agenda today, so get your questions ready. So, uh, so we're just trying to make a baseball and it's proving difficult. So while we're making a baseball, now we want stitches to kind of follow along this. And you're gonna see right along here, there's kind of a lump. So we can build that lump in a couple different ways. Um, if you wanted to like model that lump in, so where the stitches happen, and then just outside of the stitches, if you wanted to go in here and say like insert multiple edge loops, I'm gonna go ahead and keep the poly group and then you can kind of click and pull. Um, oh, we need to do, hover over, so Z modeler brush, B, Z, M, hover over an edge, hold down the space bar, insert multiple edge loops, interactive elevation, keep poly group. So now when I click and pull, I can pull up and you can even round this out if you want to and then you can just tap on this side and you can do that. So that can be a way you can kind of add that lumpiness, however, I have a feeling maybe when I subdivide, I'll go through and just use a brush stroke, just kind of stroke along there, um, just to keep my geometry evenly spaced. I could always project that to simpler geometry, but uh, I think that'll be a good choice. So, cause yeah, I have a feeling, okay, let's do this. So I also maybe want to transfer this poly paint here to this uh, Z sphere here, just so I can keep track of like how close my stitches need to be. Uh, or I can just use this one as uh, a visual guide and turn on transparency uh, and use that. You can see my baseball kind of shrank a little bit too. So I'm gonna go back here. We're gonna say, turn off X symmetry, go to unmatch my center, turn X symmetry back on just by tapping X. And then we're gonna scale this back out. Um, oh, also BTR to go back to transpose regular, not transpose cloth. So here, to here, and let's see if this will even work. I'm gonna go back to this baseball here. Um, we could do project all right now and just use a poly paint. I'm actually gonna say control tap this point in history so I can turn this off. And then I'm gonna say, let's give this a shot. Uh, geometry, oh, project, and then project history, yes. Okay, so I can project my poly paint here. It's not a whole lot of resolution because uh, I have very simple geometry and poly paint is just per vertex, um, but I'm just gonna keep that in my back pocket. So. Stitches, oh my gosh, how am I gonna do this? So basically, along that line, we want a stitch that's gonna go from the inside and kind of flatten here. So it's gonna go round to flat. So let's go ahead and make that stitch and it's gonna be kind of angled a little bit too. Whew, I might have bit off more than I can chew. Um, let's go out of edit mode, switch. And whenever I go out of edit mode and switch, I like to do a quick save, which is nine on your keyboard. 
Um, and then we're going to go through here. Let's just grab a poly mesh star, go into edit mode. We're going to go down here to initialize and we'll hit Q cube. So we're just a simple cube. I'm going to hold down Alt and scale along this axis to thin this out. And again, we want one side to be kind of round and then the other side to be kind of flat. Um, so you know what I could do? I'm just going to grab this side here and then uh, crease. So geometry, crease that open border. And we're going to thin this out quite a bit. And maybe even, uh, let's hit Control W, make us all in polygroup, and then we'll just say uh, bevel edge loop complete, just to kind of add some geometry in here. And then Control Alt W, kind of bend that up a little bit. And then, you know, we'll put a bevel right down the middle. And then this side here, we'll kind of tap Alt so we can just pull along that surface normal here. Okay, so now if I hit D for dynamic, this is what it's going to look like smooth. It's going to be, you know, it's going to be a little more pinched on this side. So I'm going to turn on, let's see where our floor is. Yeah, X symmetry. So I'm going to hit X on our keyboard. Go over here with our move brush. We're going to say it's going to get a little pinched on this side. And this side's going to be pretty flat. And if we want to make it really flat, we can go in here and say insert single edge loop. And then just as we pull along this geometry here, um, we're just adding an edge loop and then it'll kind of flatten it out. So that could be our stitch and it kind of goes that way. And honestly, it kind of does this. I'm going to turn off X symmetry because it kind of goes like so. It kind of goes down like this and then it goes this and then it kind of even does a little up this away. Something like that. So that's kind of the stitch that I'm seeing. Gets wider, thin, ends pretty wide, kind of like that. So we want to place this stitch all the way uh, across our baseball along that seam line. And you know what, from the side, since it is going to lump out, again, I'm going to hold down Control Alt and I'm just going to move this up. So when we build in that lump, that'll kind of go over it. I think that'll work. Man, I really thought this was going to be like five minutes. So B, create insert mesh new. So now we have an insert mesh brush. So you can go through there. If you want to make them all the same size, just hold down control. And that'll snap it to your brush size. So again, control and then control. So you could literally go and hand place these. I'm hoping I don't have to do that. So now that we have this with a brush, and again, brush, got a new one. We're going to go in here to brush. Uh, nope, we're going to go in here to stroke. And we're going to tell it, I want you to be attached to a curve. So now when I do this, I can go through and do this. Um, now they need to be spaced out a little bit more. So underneath stroke, curve step of maybe 1.3. And then we'll do that again. Start spacing them out more. We'll say maybe 1.6. Something like that. Maybe a little bit more. We'll say 1.5. Okay. So let's say that's spaced out. We'll see if it's spaced out enough. We can always change that. Then you're also going to see when I drag this curve out, um, number one, it's snapping to something in space, right? It's not on this object. That's because I have these points stored in history. So it's actually snapping to that baseball <laughs> that I, that the baseball you can't see, it's snapping to it. So I'm going to hold down control, tap, and then tap again just to get rid of that. And now it'll snap to that object. Uh, and I do have snapping turned on. We'll turn on bend start, bend end, just in case you want to rotate these things around. Um, so there you go. There's our stitch. And then you know what? While we're in here, just in case I need to, I'm going to flip this over. So undo all that, Shift Z. So the first one we captured was, I don't remember which way, so I'm just going to capture it again. So also, we're going this way. So basically, when I'm re going down the curve, it's going to go in this, it's going top to bottom. If I turned it this way and captured it, it would go like this. Um, so I want to turn it this way. And I'm going to say B. I got this one selected, create insert mesh, append. Okay, and then I'm gonna flip it over. I'm gonna say B, create insert mesh, append. So now I have both directions. Same thing with like zippers or something, just capture both sides and then you got yourself, you got, you got it covered. Back to our baseball. Uh, again, I wanna frame this mesh, that's under stroke. If you open up all these curve functions and curve modifiers, a lot of cool stuff in here. Uh, we're gonna go over here to frame mesh with our polygroup border. Boop, there we go. So that puts a little curve along there. And then I can take these and I can go give me, uh, also turn off X symmetry. If you have X symmetry on, it's going to go both ways and then it's both directions and then it's gonna do that. So now, uh, if I frame this mesh now, uh, they're too close together. So I'm going to go back here to curve step and say again 1.5. 
And we'll space them out. Oh, not quite far enough. We'll say 2.5. Okay, so that's about right. Uh, the only problem is the seam line, I want this scooted over. Um, if you needed to change the depth, uh, for example, go down here to depth, it's already it's set to 14. Uh, if you pull this out, as you frame this mesh, they'll be kind of floating. So, you know, say embed of zero and tap, they'll be, you know, right along there. So that's one way you could change that. But as far as like going left to right of this curve, uh, curves are based, the IMM is based on the bounding box of the object and it puts it right down the middle. You could put a bounding box around there and scoot it, but I don't have the patience for that. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to go hold down Control Shift and select this one. Then I'm going to do Control Shift S to shrink, and then Control W to make a new polygroup. Same thing on the pink. Control Shift Tap to isolate it. Control Shift S to shrink. Control W to make it its own polygroup. Now um, I can Control Shift Tap this one, for example, and then go over here and I can say, you know, just give me a frame around my border. So now it's inset on here, and then I can put our stitch over here, and it'll hopefully I can get it to kind of meet up where that seam line is, or I can kind of scoot this seam line over if I need to. So there's one direction. Let's see if I've got this right. Uh, skin shader, okay. So, and again, I'm for everyone wondering, I'm just looking, I'm staring intently at this image. Okay, it goes flat end in. So in that case, I'm gonna go back to, let's hit M. Let's, uh, these are both the same direction. So this one, I'm gonna flip this one around. No, flat end in this one. Okay, and then we said 2.5, right? Okay, so now we have our flat end in and our pinched end uh, on the opposite side and then I'm going to do the opposite for this side and they'll kind of meet in the middle. The other thing too, just in case you need this information, I don't need it, but just in case you do, uh, underneath brush there is a modifiers and in here there is a strength multiplier. It's set to one. So if you needed to thin this out, make these thinner, go in here to Z intensity, you can drag this down and make it thinner. However, if you needed to make it thicker than what you originally made, you can go capture it again with a thicker geometry, but you could also go in here to strength multiplier and crank that up. So now when you tap that, it'll go through and make that thicker. So again, I don't need to do that, but you can use it. So, uh, okay, that's getting pretty close, I think. Let's do Shift Z and see if, uh, you know, another thing too, if I'm gonna keep going back and like double checking my work and my stitches, I can say, okay, here's my baseball in space. There's my seam line right there ish. And if I want to capture this, I'm going to go up here to movie timeline show. Tap in here and then to movie show off so you don't see it. And then as I move this around, I can use my arrow keys forward and oh, um, go out of this brush so I don't toggle through my different strokes. And then uh, it'll snap back. So, okay. I think that's pretty good. Um, the stitches need to be a little bit bigger. So I'm going to say draw size up to say 22. Oops. Uh, brush here, draw size up to 20, no, let's say 24. Yeah, that's about right. So now, uh, okay, so that's one side of our stitch and they're about as far spaced apart as I would need them to be. Whew. Let's try this again. So what I'm gonna do is while these are masked, I'm gonna go ahead and tap there to get rid of that line or that curve. If you need to, you can also go up here to curve functions, delete. I'm gonna say split mass points. And then <laughs> we're gonna go back to our baseball here. And we're gonna say, again, I'm gonna isolate this one. <sighs> Come on, Mike, you can do this. Frame mesh border. I'm gonna go back into our brush here. We're gonna select the first type, tap. Shift Z, we'll put this back. Ah, go to another brush so I can snap it back. Um, these are a little too far apart, so let's see. Um, I gotta go back to my brush. Silly. Uh, curve 2.5 on this one is somehow 
too much on the outside. I don't know why. Okay, so we'll go two. Maybe it's a slightly different. I'll go like 1.7. And then and now instead of using my tablet, I'm just going to use my mouse so I can just click. Uh, and then these are offset slightly, which I think is about right. Depth is okay. Ugh. Tap, split mass points. Um, okay, so we have this. I'm going to go ahead and hit D for dynamic. And let's go look at my dynamic settings here. Dynamic smooth subdiv of 2. And we could even go in here if we need to like give it a little bit of inflate or smooth. We can do that with our deformers, but I think we're okay. We'll turn on dynamic. So we've got stitches. And then I need to go in here. And like I said before, I think what I can do is just go along this baseball. And I'm going to turn off RGB, turn on Z add. I'm going to go back in here and turn this off. Uh, and then I can just sculpt uh, along this uh, geometry here. However, before I do that, I'm going to subdivide this. Okay, so we have poly groups. We have this. Um, I don't think I'm going to go through and actually punch, because you could actually do the exact same thing and punch Boolean holes along here. I'm not going to deal with that. I can't do that this morning. So I'm getting close. So hit, hit Control D uh, once, we'll say, and then X symmetry turned on. I'll hold down. And now if we want to scope through without being interfering with these stitches, we can. We can turn on transparency with Ghost. However, I wonder if we do want to semi have the stitches block our brush stroke. Um, or we could just manually go in really quickly and just kind of knock those back so it looks like the stitches are kind of digging in um, to the mesh. We could also, before we start this, we could actually split this geometry. Just go out here and then say split and then I wonder if I do do that. Or that's because it looks like, again I don't even have the picture up here, but it looks like, okay on this one here, this one kind of crisscrosses and bubbles in onto the other one. I'll let you decide if you want to split these off and give them thickness. I think for now, I'll go ahead and keep this just in case. I'll duplicate this off in case I change my mind. Uh, okay, so we've got geometry here. I'm going to go through really quickly. And you know what? We'll subdivide one more time. I'm not going to have transparency turned on. I am going to turn off a line cursor to surface. And I am going to go through here. And we'll just give a little bit of a bump out underneath those stitches here where the stitches are kind of gathering that leather. And again, we're just using our standard brush for this. We're going to go through and the other thing you could do is also the stitches could go on a texture. You don't even have to do geometry, but if you wanted to 3D print this, then having it in the geometry would be kind of nice. So here and here. Again, we're just kind of sculpting up through. And then obviously we can smooth or sculpt, hold down Alt to kind of push that back in if we need to. Um, we'll see how this works. So I'm gonna hold down Shift to smooth and I'm gonna let go of Shift as I'm smoothing because it's gonna kind of push along the existing volume here. Because I don't wanna, I wanna keep that ridge that I just made, but I do wanna smooth it back down. So again, hold down Shift and then let go of Shift as you're smoothing. And through here, I'm going to do Damien, or Dam Standard Brush. And we're going to go through and we're going to kind of put a little seam right there. Then again, Shift here. And then again, build up. Oh, let's go back to our Standard Brush here. And any any brushes I use a lot are just assigned the hotkeys, so I don't have to go and dig for them. I would like, you know, if you can also put them over here in your interface or whatever you want to do. So, Shift to Smooth. So we got our little ridge built. And then we'll go and we'll, I think we'll manually just punch in some holes. We'll see the best way to do that. Or maybe not the best way, but a way. We can also go through and move these stitches a little bit so they're a little bit more interlocky. I think there's a fast way to do that, I hope. We'll, we'll give it a shot. And then again, damn standard to kind of punch that in right there, right along this line. So again, they didn't place these stitches exactly where I want, but I think we can nudge them into place individually quickly. So uh, let's do that. Um, and another thing too, for just dropping in these holes, I'm gonna hit Control D. So now we're up to about, eh, one more time, about, about half a million polygons on just the baseball itself. So if I go through here and like, uh, we'll take our standard brush, we'll clone it off, we'll put in, make it a drag dot. We'll go in here and give it a alpha 06. Z intensity of 25 might be okay. I'm gonna hold down Alt and also we're gonna turn off 
uh, lazy mouse by tapping L. So that's underneath stroke. Lazy mouse, if you tap L, that turns that off. Focal shift down to negative 100 so we get the full effect of that alpha. And then, you know what, crank that intensity up. So we can go through here. And while we're doing this, we could actually, since we have, we can turn polypaint on. I'm just going to go ahead and say, you know, fill this with white. We can actually go in here with like a dark gray. And we'll turn on polypaint for these. So while I'm doing this, um, actually, RGB, Z add at the same time. It's actually, let's make this one dark gray. Because when I hold down Alt, it's going to grab the secondary color. So we'll say dark gray here. So as I'm going through here, and I think it's grabbing, or is it just grabbing black? Ah, it's okay. So we can go through here, and we can kind of just dial in. Dial it in. Now, however, before I do that, um, and you don't have to do that either. You can just you can fill that in with a color later or do it in the texture. Um, if we go back here to white, uh, I do want to say, let's go over here and let's just make this like a Control-Alt-F is my hot key for fill. Sorry. Okay, make switch. Goodness gracious. There we go. So we make those red. Uh, and again, I want these to kind of interlock a little bit better. So if I want to move these individually, I can go into my move brush. And right now it's just going to move them within the brush radius. However, if I take my draw size and put it down to one, and then underneath move brush auto masking, there's a topological. You can turn that on. There's also BM. There's a move topological somewhere in here you can use, but I'm just going to change the setting. So now I can go through here individually and kind of nudge them into place quickly. So that way I don't have to like make poly groups or like do too much masking and moving. I can kind of just go through here and kind of just scoot them where they need to go generally. Uh, and again, I want to, I can also alt tap this one and then scoot this one over. So instead of having these line up, I can go through and kind of just alternate them. And let's see here. Yeah, and I might have put in too many stitches actually now that I look at this. I wonder if there's a nano mesh way you know what, I probably could have used nano mesh because along that strip here, now that I think about it, and I'm not going to go back and do it, but you could, uh, on subdivision level one before you subdivided, along this strip here, you could put a, uh, a stitch on every single face and then you could H tile it or V tile it to give you more or less stitches and then you would have rotation. Hmm, you know what, I said I wasn't going to do it, but actually... Uh, since we already have our brush, let's hit B. Let's go back to our insert mesh brush. Let's say brush, just like we did before. Brush, create. Uh, not stroke. Brush, create, nano mesh brush with this brush. So now we have a new nano mesh brush. And if I hover over face, we can say Anderson and nano mesh, polygroup all, hit M. Uh, we can swap between these. So I'm going to grab this one and we're just going to delete higher. We're going to pull along this nano mesh brush and let's go down here to our nano mesh properties and we're going to say uh, alignment to normal so i can go through here and i can like rotate a lot z rotation yeah so now we have control over the rotation and offset so we could say hey if it's too close to the seam or not close to the seam or length width and height we can change all of that um width a little bit longer maybe um and then again, Z rotation. So we can kind of do this. And if you need, there is a random distribution. You can go through here and just kind of randomly distribute them. Now what we need, there is H tile and V tile on here. But now that I say that, I don't think it's going to work that great. Uh, Cause it's just going to double up on the face. Hmm. But that's another option for you. You have a little bit more control on the rotation. And then uh, we would just hit M, grab the other direction. Yeah, actually, we would flip these around, but that's okay. And then same thing on this one. So now you have two indices. We have the first one and the second one. In fact, we can take the first one, copy, and then paste it onto the second one. And then we'll switch that rotation here. So we'll kind of get that. Um, ugh, gets a little gross over here. Line the short edge, maybe. No, long edge. And then we'll go back to, you know what, we'll copy this one. We'll go back here, we'll paste that one. 
long edge and then we'll rotate the other way. Hey, look at that. <laughs> that kind of works, right? So maybe use, maybe use nano mesh. So if we do want this geometry, because right now they're just instances, so they're kind of sticking, sticking to the mesh, uh, we can go through here and we can say uh, one to mesh, one to mesh, um, and then we can go through here and say, okay, give me this one, control shift, control shift A to grab all these verts, say split hidden, and now these stitches are separate. So now we have this one is a good one and this one is a good one. Let's go out of solo mode, and now we can compare that. Yeah, I like that one better even though they are a little too turned. Sorry, man. IMM, you're not going to cut it today. So, back to where we started. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, we'll go ahead and delete this one. We'll start with this one. So, again, I'm going to duplicate this one off real quick. Hide it. The original. Go in here. Hit Control-D a couple times. Go in here with my standard brush. And just real quick, we'll... Uh, I'm just going to kind of put a little ridge along here with axisymmetry turned on. And I think they're spaced a little bit better too. Um, you know what, I should have done an offset. <laughs> you know what, I don't care. Uh, the baseball's good enough, everybody. You, you can fiddle with the settings. I'm getting bored of this. So I'm gonna go ahead and just wrap this up. So we're gonna go through here, put these little ridges in here. And again, you can be as careful with this as you want with your Z modeler brush and then project back if you want to resimplify your geometry uh, to the, the copy that you made. But again, I think we'll be okay. We're in good shape. So now we've got this. We have our stitches here. They're all in one subtool now. If I want to split them out, I can. I'm not going to bother. Hit D for dynamic. For some reason, my dynamic, I messed it up. So I'm going to have to manually go in here. And uh, you know what? Maybe we'll do a deformation inflate under your geometry deformation menu of like one, just to soften those out just a tiny bit. And crease level, I want, you know what, I'm gonna say uncrease all. I don't think we need any creases, and may, maybe a little, another little inflate, 0.5. Okay, uh, now back to our baseball here. We can hold down shift to kind of smooth those out. We can hit control D a couple times to get more geometry. Again, we'll go back to our standard brush that we cloned off here with our little drag dot and then we can hold down uh, alt as we go through and we can kind of punch in a little hole so we're going to go through here really quickly and just kind of knock some holes in here um while i'm doing that i can be talking about other some other stuff again if i miss something i apologize there's a lot of stuff over here now okay upgrading computer smooth groups hockey uh hockey 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 yeah baseball um, oh yeah, rocks. Um, we'll talk about that in just a second. Uh, download some IMM brushes. They only work when I paste them in ZBrush startup brushes, not the general brushes you have in Lightbox. Can you please tell me how I can fix them because they populate my brush menu. Download some IMM brushes. They only work when I paste them in ZBrush startup. Hmm, they should work, however, unless there's some like weird brush that I don't really know what it is. Um, if you put your brushes in uh, C program, if you're on Windows, I don't know where it would be on the Mac, but somewhere similar, I'm sure. C program files, pixel like ZBrush 2022. Z brushes, this is where your light box looks. So you can put your own custom folder in there and populate it however you want, name it however you want. Um, however, if you go in here to ZBrush 2022, Z startup brush presets, this will load up with ZBrush. Um, and in fact, if you go in here to uh, Z data brush presets. I would say copy paste this so you have a backup to always go to. These are the brushes that load up with ZBrush. If you want to make a change to a default brush or get rid of one, you can go in here and you can change these brushes. Again, if you make changes to these and you mess it up, you have to do a ZBrush reinstall unless you can go back to your copy folder and get the original brushes back. Um, but yeah, it should be under Z startup. Oh, I'm sorry, uh, Z, what did I just say? ZBrush 2022, ZBrushes. Yeah, that should put them in the light box. I don't know. Now, if they don't work when you bring them in from light box, that I have no idea. That's just weird. Um, I think. And if you want to have these holes a little bit more blurred, you can actually go into the alpha menu and you can actually blur this alpha. You don't even have to go back into I don't know, Photoshop or anything to change it. You can literally just blur it 
in ZBrush natively. However, I don't think I'll need to do that. Ah, you know what? Oh. Drag our undo slider back because you can't have X symmetry on while you're doing this. So this is where it gets really fun and exciting on a live stream where I go through and I do the most boring thing in the world for like 10 straight minutes. Um, and maybe I do, maybe I don't. Oh, did this one flip? Hmm. You know what you could do on this one here where you see it went back to forth? I don't really care about it right now, but you could go through here in your Z modeler brush. Um, let's do this. Let's go back to at least the polygon star. You could hover over a face and you could do spin uh, and you could spin the edges and that'll actually spin your nano mesh. So if you're paying more attention, uh, you could go in and fix that if you needed to. Um, but again, I don't care. So back here to standard brush. And then holding down Alt and putting in little holes for these stitches to live. And then another thing I can do, uh, because I will have a polygroup line, I can actually go in there, thank goodness. And because even though it's all one group, I mean, I could, like I said, I could split out the two halves of the baseball and just have those as separate subtools. And of course, the seam line would be gorgeous if I did that. Uh, however, I'll show you a quick way, Walder one subtool, uh, to get you a quick seam line. Of course, we do need to kind of go in with our inflate brush along that seam line and kind of bubble it up so it kind of looks like it's being pushed and pulled by the seams, or by the stitches, I should say. Um, yeah, boy, that's boring. Um, can you sculpt a shoe with laces in their respective holes plus good low poly topology? Yeah. So if you go to my YouTube channel, again, if you're just joining us, here is YouTube, here is ArtStation. Both of them have links to videos and some of these things have links to multiple videos. I think Pirate Ship in a Bottle has a couple, yeah, has a couple videos in there that point to the live streams. So you don't have to go find them. Um, however, uh, oh yeah, shoes. So here, making shoes in ZBrush, 85 Air Jordans. Uh, as far as like, if you want to retopologize this and bake off the laces or whatever, that's just retopologizing. So not a whole lot of information there. There's also, a, uh, here's a live stream, make a shoe live stream, another one. And then somewhere in here, it's actually easier to find on here, is a boot tutorial that'll tell you how to make boots. Again, if you're asking like, hey, how do you retopologize a shoe? You just put little squares where you want your topology to go, and then you bake it off. It's not rocket science, so it uh, shouldn't be too much of a problem, but as far as just making the source high res, um, there's a couple resources there. Um, cool, thanks for stopping by, Shay. Um, let's see. Um, let's go shoe, yes. No problem. And again, if I miss a question, I apologize. I'm kind of going through really quick, so just shut it out again if I skip. Um, place a background of the baseball. Yeah, we'll do a we'll do a render a, where your background is. I think oh, is it under lighting background? You can throw a background in here. I think yeah. Um, in ZBrush, if you want to use like HDR lighting, you can actually use that background. I'm not gonna do that because I don't really remember exactly how that works. Um, you know, another way that you could do that is you could just have it as your document. Oh, I don't do that very often. Uh, you know what? Maybe not. Maybe you wouldn't do that as a document. Hmm. I'm not sure how you'd have like a background sitting there. Uh, you could go see through. You know what? There is a way to do that. I just don't do it very often. There is a way to swap out your document with... Is that under draw? Yeah, you can put images. Oh uh, no, draw goes to your floor planes. Hmm, I wish I was more help there, I, I apologize. Oh, crap. Oh no, it just logged me out of restream. Give me a sec. Oh, really? Really? Hold on. Give me a sec. Um, paste. Okay, I just lost everybody's comment. Let me log in again. Why did it do that? Why would you do that? And it's not letting me log in. Okay, close. Restream chat. <laughs> ah, 
Okay, I'm back on Restream Chat, and I have nothing in there. So everybody who said anything, say it again, because it is not there anymore. Ugh. Yeah, we'll do a baseball stadium next. That's the first uh, comment I see, so <laughs> that's where I'm starting from, everybody. I'm sorry. I don't know why that happened. Uh, okay, really quickly, I'm just going to go through here. And uh, again, we have our brush here. Standard, I'm just going to hold down Alt, and really quickly, I'm just going through and just knocking this in. Uh, you could set up an alpha brush that could maybe, you know, you could drag it along here and have it match up. I don't, I don't think I could get that to work. So, um, to heck with that. Just, this is brute force methodology. And you know what? Honestly, when in doubt, <clears throat> if you're having a hard time coming up with an elegant solution, brute force is a way to go. It'll get the job done. It might take you five six minutes to do and as long as you're not live streaming and sweating about how boring you are uh, it's not that big a deal you know you just put on your favorite uh, music what music that was a question that was earlier what am i listening to uh what's the last music i listened to that's so weird um that i'm drawing a complete blank <laughs> back in the day what a uh it was like Rob Zombie, Ludacris, uh, Biggie Tupac, Marilyn Manson, Nine Inch Nails. That vein, uh, that that kind of thing. What else I listen to? No, nah, I guess that was about it. <laughs> Maybe uh, movie sound like uh, soundtracks. You know what that is, now that I mentioned that, I did listen to a bit of the, uh, oh, thank you. There's a uh, machinist, so the, the machinist with Christian Bale, and it's got a really creepy kind of vibe, and then I, st I looked into that, I was like, oh, what's this music all about? And uh, also the, another good one is the, the Witch but it's on the poster, it looks like the Vovich. Uh, that's got a really kind of creepy soundtrack vibe. I don't know why I was listening to this music. It's kind of weird to <laughs> work while you're listening to creepy sounds, uh, but I was. And uh, what's his name? You know what, it might be in my YouTube search. Um, which the Machinist soundtrack and then, damn, uh, music. Hold on, I want, now I need to find this. He did all the, he did a bunch of soundtracks for like Alfred Hitchcock and stuff. Um, this is gonna bother me. Um, Psycho. music Bernard Herman H E R R M A N N um he has some really good music if you like that creepy vibe oh, okay uh morning sorry everybody uh hi Mike hope you're a quick question about fiber mesh did you text your model before adding fur hair to do the other way around uh on a, you know you can do both so if we go in here and we say fiber mesh I have one in here that's like a, a poly paint fiber mesh where you poly paint the object first then you grow your fiber mesh through the poly paint so it automatically colorizes your poly paint. So that's, or it colorizes your fiber mesh according to whatever. So, you know, go in and you can, just like we're doing with the baseball, spotlight paint your, what is this thing? Anteater? Uh, and then as you do your fiber mesh on your animator body, it'll actually pick up that poly paint underneath and grow your fiber mesh through it. However, even if you don't do that, or if you do that and it's not exactly what you want, you can just go through and paint fiber mesh with RGB on your brush. It's just polygons, so. Or mask and then invert. Uh, or, or I'm sorry, mask um, and then the color fill. You know, if you just want to fill a group of fibers with a color. Does that make sense? And then almost done, almost done. And then uh, back up here. Um, 
render a time lapse of your sculpt right under here underneath movie there is a history forward history and backward history so you can do forward history uh, recording so it actually go through and play your history back and you can also uh, do some stuff with your camera to kind of determine like how much your camera moves while you do it. It's been a million years since I've done that. So there's that. Or you can just record. You can literally just do a movie. I think you just record. Begin, resume recording. So you just record while you work and then you can edit that down uh, in, a, in an editor to do a time lapse. Um, and I think that recorder, it doesn't like record like 30 frames a second or anything, I don't think. So I think it actually might have a built-in kind of time lapse functionality. So even natively in ZBrush, you should be able to do time lapses. The history recording, what that does is get rid of your um, brush. So it doesn't show your brush, it just kind of shows your model undulating uh, while it's being created, which is kind of a cool look. So give that a shot. I don't think I have any videos on that because that's like old school functionality that was before I was making YouTube videos. So I know vaguely how it works, but I, I haven't really sat down and done it. Okay, so that seam line we have here. So if I go back to my object, I'm gonna hold down Control Shift, and we're just gonna isolate this blue and orange and hit Control W to make it all in polygroup, and then this blue and green here, Control W, and now we just have one seam line. So now I can go in here and I can say masking. Let's go ahead and boop, boop, boop. Don't need nanomesh anymore. Don't need to nationalize masking. Uh, we wanna mask our polygroup here. And in fact, I'm gonna grow this, uh, and then we can sharpen it and then control tap to invert it. And I'm gonna turn off view mask so I can have it mask but not see it. And then deformation inflate. And then we'll just drag this to the left. And then I'll kind of pull in a little bit and that'll kind of give us our seam line. Again, I am gonna have to go through here. Uh, and you know what? I I'm gonna unmask because I think our original mask by feature is that really thin line. I'm gonna go in here and say boost. And eh, that's not really doing much. Um, tap to invert that. Let's see if I just pull in that one if it's yeah, that's fine. So I'll just kind of pull in that seam line right there, and then I'm gonna go back through and kind of just do a little bit of manual sculpting. Uh, maybe just with my inflate brush along here. And you know, just a slight smooth along here, I think will work fine. So anyway, you could finesse this as much as you want, go in and move these stitches around and flip them around how they should be. There's probably a better way <laughs> to to wrangle a baseball shape and all that stuff. I tried, y'all, I tried. And if you, if you smooth too much, you can actually go back in here with your damn standard O2 brush, which you have to download from Gumroad, I think. And you can put a pretty tight seam in here and then go through here with your pinch brush. You can pinch those together. Uh, and then maybe a little bit of move, but I'm not gonna worry too much about that. So we've got our seam line in there. It's a little bit smooth. And then I can go in here with my standard brush or an inflate brush, and I can just manually go through and just kind of do that little balloon. Let's try inflate. Yeah, I think inflate brush would work fine through here. If you need more con, you can use the contrast brushes too. Um, and again, we're just kind of giving the illusion that that leather is really bubbling up where those stitches are kind of forcing it to kind of be all baseball y and such. World Series isn't over, right? Astros, Phillies. I haven't watched a baseball game. You know what, now that I think about it, I don't know if I've ever watched a baseball game all the way through. I was more of a basketball. I played basketball. I don't know if I'm a basketball fan, but I played basketball, so I understand it a little bit better. I can be more enthralled while I watch it, as opposed to, like, I know hockey's supposed to be really fun if you go in person, but, like, hockey and football soccer never really played them so while I'm watching and I'm kind of bored um, I also think there might be something wrong with my brain because even while I'm doing things that are supposed to be fun like playing video games I get things get tedious real fast <laughs> so uh, I might have some issues where I'm like oh game of the year let's go play this game and like 20 minutes in I'm like can are you serious with this I'm picking up pieces of paper with shit written on it. Like, what am I doing with my life? Um, and I'm sure it's great. I'm sure by the time I get to the end, it's like this amazing epiphany of, you know, what it means to be a human. And if I could just, you know, play the game for a couple hours. But man, sitting down and doing that nowadays is like, 
it's a chore and I don't know what's wrong with me uh, I really don't I like creating stuff and I like learning stuff but like the tedium of certain things <laughs> really gets to me even this is less tedious than me because at least I'm like you know getting towards something I'm creating something it is tedious but it's like hey at the end I'll have something whereas the tedium of something fun like watching a boring sport or playing a video game that's not supposed to be boring but kind of is a little bit tedious to sit through uh, while you're trying to get something done I don't know it looms it weighs heavy on my shoulders for some reason nowadays didn't used to I could kind of uh, escape but I think the last time I was able to really escape was like Fallout 3 uh, ever since then I've had a hard time like just being like hey man just let go just get into it I'm like yeah I can't I'm trying it's not happening but uh, I think a part of that might just be man, I'll burn out or something or my brain just won't allow me it's like hey dude you need to go do the dishes <laughs> or you, you, you don't know this program very well go learn it uh, and make content uh. okay just a little bit of inflate brush along here while I try and think of something to say so you guys don't get too bored okay baseball <sighs> okay I think I think that's okay uh, okay back to my message here time-lapse uh, football helmet you know I grew up making football helmets when I worked at EA Tiburon uh, over there in Lake Mary Florida no Maitland somewhere in Florida my chums over at Tiburon how you guys doing mm. in fact I remember specifically making the Bulldog DNA I think it was the Bulldog DNA face mask I was updating those and then my job for a while was on when they had NCAA which I don't they might might not have anymore or might they do I don't really remember um, the pride stickers that go on like Ohio State there's a UV map that is mapped to all the helmets and then you would go through because they they put the stickers on in a certain order I don't know exactly what order but what I had to do way back in the day was go through and like show the placement and I even think the population order of the sticker so that they would populate on the helmet correctly over time um, yeah that was some of my first character or character work that I did in the video game industry how cool is that uh, I don't know why I'm so tense. Oh, just calm down, Mike. Um, <laughs> uh, I don't know. I feel boring every time I stream. That's why I wake up with cold sweats at like 4 a.m. Like, oh my God, you're really going to make a baseball in a live stream? What is wrong with you? Audiobooks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I was listening to a lot of true crime audiobooks for a while, and then I got into uh, some podcasts smartless and uh uh i'm drawing blanks this morning um conan o'brien's podcast oops my wife messaged me no one won the powerball that's what i really need to have happen is i really need to win the lottery i think that would calm me down enough to where i can enjoy a video game if i had like a billion dollars in my bank account uh, can you split a mesh, zero mesh, and merge back the pieces while maintaining the edge, vert, number, and position? You can, actually, I think. Um, when you go to zero mesh, you're going to... Oh, it wouldn't be in my custom ones. I don't do this very often. However, there is an option when you split something off and you want a zero mesh. Um, go to... So, geometry. Zero mesh. There is a way to freeze your border. So, that'll freeze the verts on the border and then zero mesh inside of it. Uh, so that way you can again like you said split it split it apart zero mesh merge it back together and then your border verts will match up as long as you zero mesh with freeze border on for both both pieces uh, made the holes included in the stitch brush then I split the holes geometry from the stitch after it was drawn out from the boolean ah perfect so uh, like Sparky's saying when I put this on here I could have had a whole geometry rotating with in this case we use nano mesh rotating with the stitch and then you split off the holes use those as booleans beautiful now that's that's problem solving right there. Thank you, Sparky. Um. <laughs> the anteater was the first one. That's a pretty old one, man. That's uh, 
four years ago. Thanks for sticking with me for four years while I make the most boring thing in the world. Um, soccer ball would be a little more difficult because I would need to start with that primitive. I wonder, you know what? I bet there's a plug-in for those primitives for ZBrush. I don't know exactly where it is, but like, yeah, soccer ball primitive. Um, movie in the series, yeah. You know what? I don't have, because my wife, I'll watch TV with my wife, and I have a good time sitting down and relaxing with her. So when we watch, um, I got to say, like, House of the Dragons, I'm kind of, and again, it might just be my state of mind. Like, Game of Thrones season one through four, beautiful, perfect television. House of the Dragons, I was having a hard time keeping track of who, which, which Ra Rhaenyras and Rhaenys and Rhaenys I was trying to keep track of and who they are and what their name was. So uh, that says more about me than it does about the show. I'm sure it's a great show. I just yeah, couldn't, I, I watched it. Um, story games, got to wear Witcher. I'm, I'm playing Witcher 3 right now. Um, that's interesting. It's a lot sitting through. Um, <laughs> I, do, I try not to get in the mindset of, like, I need to min-max my Witcher character, but, like, at some point, some of the dialogue was like, man, it's cool and it's awesome, but, damn, it's a lot of talking. I'm trying to get through this quest line. <laughs> and again, it's not the game, it's me. I should just be able to sit there and, like, in, and enjoy it. Um, Dark Souls, uh, you know, I played Elden Ring, and I think that's what made, I don't think it was what broke me, but when I got into Elden Ring, <laughs> I started playing it, and I was like, what the hell am I doing? What, what is this? I, I'm, I'm in, I've never played a FromSoft game, but I was in there, I was like, okay, Elden Ring, everybody's talking about it, let me go and check it out. Go in there, and I'm like, I have no clue what's going on. I have no idea what I'm supposed to be doing, and I have no idea about what I'm doing with my life and who I am as a person. Uh, but, and so I thought, I'm, I'm too stupid for this game. Like, somehow, you know, being a video game developer, I just became too dumb to play video games. And uh, you know what? If that's the worst thing that happens to me, that's fine. However, I, then I went, I saw a Reddit thread that was like, hey, what's one piece of advice you would give to new people playing uh, Elden Ring? So I was like, oh, let me go check that out and see what they say. And how I was playing Elden Ring is exactly the experience you're supposed to have in Elden Ring. It's basically, yeah, no clue what you're doing. Go south was the, was the, uh, <laughs> go south and, uh, put stuff into, uh, vitality, you know, put points into vitality. That was about the only advice. And other than that, be lost, have no clue, and just engross yourself in dying a lot. Um, because that's the experience of the game, which I'm sure is great. Again, I need to win the lottery and then I'm going to play Elden Ring. And I think I'll enjoy it a lot more. Um... Yeah, not being able to relax. I bet that's it, Shay. You might that might be right. I might just be burnout. I think that's what it is. Um, <laughs> yeah. Oh, snap. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, when I bake substance, sometimes I don't get perfect results like I do in ZBrush. Is there something you suggest? What should I pay attention to? Substance baking is kind of one and done. You change the cage, or you bring in your own cage, or you change the min max of the ray distance but other than that i don't know if you have a ton of control maybe try baking in marmoset and then that'll give you i mean gosh it's got all the pro it's got all the control of skew maps and uh cage maps that you can adjust on the fly and you can see it update the bake as you adjust those uh, cages uh with a mask or with a map so maybe try marmoset baking it's got a lot of control in there that should get you pretty damn good results um Squid Game, I enjoyed. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. You you guys play more games than I do, I'm sure. Uh, but I'm trying to get back into it, and it's, it's tough going. Now, we were talking earlier about rocks. So how would I make a rock and ZBrush? So if I am just straight up making a rock and ZBrush, we'll come back to this baseball in a second. So uh, it's already quick save since I've been waxing poetic. So we have a sphere in here, edit, make poly mesh 3D, control shift, go through here. I'm only gonna use actually a trim curve. And I'm just gonna start slicing this thing into um, kind of a rocky shape here. And then, in fact, I gotta, I gotta document, you guys can peruse. Let's go through here to my drive rocks. R-O-C-K-S, rocks. I'm going to share 
this document with y'all. Share, copy link, done, paste. So here's a document of just some rock notes I've taken over time. Uh, there's probably there's way better rock people than I am, but for what it's worth, here's a rock. Then we're gonna go through here with maybe a BTB. I have Trim Smooth Border lined up with a square alpha in it. You can go into your comic key, brush, trim brushes, grab Trim Smooth Border with a square alpha. Um, I'm actually gonna go through here. We're gonna turn this into a uh, Dynamesh with not too high of a resolution. I'm just gonna kind of tap along here and start making a rock. Now, if I'm making a rock, like a very specific thing, like an obsidian rock that needs to match a concept, that would be a little bit more tedious where I would go through with the concept and just block out the volume and then go through very meticulous, not very meticulously, but you know, a little slower and then figure out like, okay, exactly where the swoop needs to be and exactly where this outcropping needs to be and how smooth the size need to be and what shapes need to be punched in. So it's more of a storytelling task in a rock form, <laughs> which is, again, it tries my patience a little bit, but um, so we have a rock shape-ish. And then at this point, it's kind of like, how much time do you want to put into, you know, maybe go into your Damon Standard brush. You can kind of carve in and carve out or use your clay buildup brush to kind of go through um, and do whatever you need to. And then come back in with your Trim Smooth Border brush and just kind of, you know, do what you need to do. Uh, the thing about like Trim Dynamic, uh, H polish, you can try going in there and like throwing in a square alpha with those brushes, um, but it does tend to soften your meshes. However, having said that, there's something about when you're just sculpting a rock with like this default or the matte cap gray material where you think everything needs to be razor sharp. However, when you go and get like photogrammetry or scan data of rocks, rocks really aren't, unless it's like, you know, broken off shale or something. They're not super sharp. They're generally, especially like boulders, they're sitting out there for a couple million years, right? Getting weathered. Um, so they're not as crispy as you might think they are. Although, you know, while you're just in here with Matt Cap Gray, your first instinct I think is to make everything like super crisp. Um, and then, uh, you know, against coming to the storytelling, for environment art, you kind of want a rock that's the same on all sides. So you can go through and you can kind of just use the same rock a million different times in a million different ways and it doesn't look repeating. Um, not great for storytelling in an individual sense, but maybe okay for storytelling in a world building sense. Um, however, if you did want to tell a story, then I would just toss this into, you know, substance painter and then, you know, moss and, you know, dirt cracks and all that kind of stuff. Um, Speaking of, maybe a standard brush with a high Z intensity, lazy mouse down. You can go through here and you can start like dialing in like, uh, you know, thick to thin, you know, kind of cracks and crevices and rocks and stuff like uh, rocky type things that happen. Um, you can also do a spray stroke with your trim smooth border. If you're doing like a cliff face and you just need to kind of wear it back, you can do that. Um, also, obviously alphas going into, um, alphas to drag and that so the video I sent y'all goodness uh, videos that kind of goes into it a little bit it didn't it did it wasn't great it was just me being like hey I should make a video of this because I was having a hard time finding this information whenever that happens I'm like okay after I find the information finally I'll make a video for it so people don't have to do the same thing I did but this video specifically goes into you know taking geometry and textures and reapplying them um, in a general kind of way in ZBrush. So if you want to do it in ZBrush, you definitely can. Um, and then go back in here and just kind of give yourself some nice carpal tunnel um, tapping away at a rock face. Having said that, going in here and we can say add Quixel bridge. It's two different bridges that you can use. The one you get from Unreal is a little different. That's just going to add Quixel bridge content into Unreal. Um, really? Okay, let's give this a second. Uh, sure. I just want my bridge to work. Okay, um, so uh, 3D assets, food, 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 rocks, uh, small granite, uh, nature, rock, um, boulder, uh, sandstone boulder. Uh, so we can throw this in here. Uh, you can do nanite quality. Now, you may be thinking like, oh my God, nanite quality is gonna be crazy quality, right? Yes, that's true. Uh, however, 
Uh, there's another bridge I'll show you that'll give you the actual ZBrush asset. So the Nanite quality is gonna be decimated down to probably about a million polygons. Still like crazy insane for an engine, right? So we'll just go ahead and add to this to Unreal. Um, so we've got our sandstone boulder and we got our 8K textures. So like as far as, you know, this goes, um, where's my damn mesh? There it is. Give it a second to load in. There we go. It's a big, it's a big asset, so give it a sec. So here's our sandstone boulder. And we'll hit F to frame. So, hey, where we go? Um, and if we go in here and we do, uh, what would we do? Uh, nanite visualization triangles. So here is the wonder that is nanite geometry. So, you know, you're in here close and it gets really high and then you go back out here and you get auto LODs. It's, it's astounding for static meshes. As a character artist, it's astounding for natic meshes, uh, static meshes, that's all I'll say. Uh, so we'll go back here to lit. Um, so we have this thing. Now, if you want to export this if natively from for, as a nanite mesh into something you can use, you can go in here to asset actions and you can say export. Um, however, uh, weirdly, you have to go in here and say nanite disable. And then, and then export it, because that'll just give you the straight up triangles. If you export it with Nanite enabled, it'll export like a high res mesh and it's actually pretty low res. Uh, so that's one way you can do it. However, um, you know what, let me see if it, I don't think, no, nah, this wouldn't have done it. Let me see, sandstone. Size, US it, US it, US it. Yeah, it's not gonna grab it. So again, this bridge right here is from the content bridge, import content. However, there's a standalone app, bridge, Quixel bridge. Mm. Later. Uh, if you do it through this one, give it a sec maybe. Oh, um, environment, home, 3D assets, uh, nature, and grab another rock. So, uh, boulder and what's a cool one this one's cool mossy forest boulder ah oh, damn hold on hold on um god damn it hmm. uh, epic uh-huh 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 Fine. Yes. Sign in with Epic Games. Whatever you need. Do this one more time. Okay. Yes. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Now, um, we'll use 8K resolution. Uh, there's some download settings in here, so you can go into the settings, there's download setting and export settings. When you go into download settings, if you scroll down for the models itself, you'll see there's a source C tool for this one. Great. So when we go back here and we say, okay, 8K resolution is what I want, we're going to download this. Uh, now we're downloading, we can, we're downloading a version that we can throw in here. However, in this folder, I'll show you in just a second is the actual ZBrush folder. So instead of like a million po nanite polygons, we're gonna get like, I don't know, 15 million ZBrush polygons. And this is how I make rocks. <laughs> hardest part of making rocks is just waiting for the download. And then uh, after that, you're, you're golden. Again, if you're matching a concept, I don't know, try and have fun with it. Maybe there's some, well, Put on your favorite episode of House of Dragons. House of the Dragon? House of Dragons. House of the Dragon. Downloading. Almost done, almost done, almost done. There we go. It's downloaded. Uh, so I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna say, go to files. And we're gonna go in here. And right here is a Z tool that if I load this up now, so I'm gonna go ahead and close this out. Uh, we're good for Unreal for the day, right? Don't save. Uh, so double click this. And there's textures in there too. However, the Z tool is going to have the textures loaded, I believe. Or maybe not. Maybe we have to bring those in. So texture map. Yeah, no texture. So I'm going to go in here to texture 
import. We're going to go to that folder. We're going to grab 8K albedo. Uh, there's a normal map in there, displacement map, fuzz map, roughness. Yeah, we'll grab the 8K albedo JPEG. And then we're going to select it uh, over here. And let's see if it works. Uh, we may have to flip it. Uh, let's go in here to skin shader 4 with our materials so we can kind of see a little bit better. Yeah, I'm going to guess we need to flip it. So texture, select it, go in here and flip vertically. Give it a second because it's an 8K texture. It's a lot of pixels that's flipping. Grab it again. There we go. So now, um, you know what? And I'm going to brighten this up. So we have a texture map loaded. Uh, so we can go in here to texture, select it. I'm going to go to adjust colors. And we're going to do RGB intensity. Yeah, I'm just going to lighten this up a bit. Uh, oh, maybe not that much. Just a tiny bit, just so, so we can see it a little bit better. And then I'm going to reapply that. There we go. So we've got a rock that is 18 million polygons, the original just source with an 8K texture applied. If you did want to apply this texture map to your poly paint, you can go down here to um, poly paint, right? Yeah, poly paint from texture that'll transfer. Oh, fine. MRGB on. Poly paint from texture. That'll transfer the texture map to your polygons. Uh, since we have 18 million polygons, that would probably do a pretty good job. I don't know if it's getting the full 8K on there. Um, so they also have to do the math on the pixel versus poly count transfer ratio. But um, now it's a poly paint. So you can go through here and do whatever you'd like with that geometry. Uh, I wonder, too, if it has... Subdivision history. That'd be interesting. Oh yeah, it does. So reconstruct subdiv. I'm just gonna keep hitting this, see how far down it goes. Hmm. That's not too shabby. So I'm gonna go up here, I'm gonna turn off this. We're gonna take a look. So right now we're at uh, you know, so here's seven hundred and fifty-eight thousand, uh, and then it looks like it was subdivided up. To grab even more detail so this is like the base resolution and then it's subdivided once and then subdivided again um, to get you even more geo it's really not adding anything so at this point hell you could probably granted if you go down to level one and delete higher um, you know your poly paints going to be uh, a little less detailed because you know your poly paint is based on the number of verts you have on the object um, but if you just want to you know have smaller size and use the texture with the full res texture on it. You can do that. Okay. Um, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I always think like I need to go and like catalog my uh, anatomy books and like there's so much stuff I need to do. Um, make some of the perfect substance. Okay. Um, would you say is having a smart material or tieable texture used on all your rocks would work and then some shader match to add uniqueness? Absolutely. Yeah, for sure. In fact, if you're talking about like making rocks, um, there, there's, you know, plugins you can install for like rock creation and Houdini and 3D Studio Max and stuff too. So honestly, that's kind of maybe if I'm just making rocks, that's a quick, easy way to kind of get through that. Uh, okay. Uh, that's dark blue and dark blue. Uh, Sally says, uh, help me with creating something real. Digital art is awesome. I love it, but real life objects. Yeah, I need to do some more of that. You know, sit down and actually maybe learn some like traditional, I don't, I don't learn it, but practice it. Uh, do some traditional sculpting. Maybe that would help. That'd be fun as hell, right? Um, yeah, 3D printing, 2D posters. Yeah, something real. Uh, and you know, I do have some, I have three 3D printers sitting back there. Maybe I'll get back into that. <laughs> Uh, after that, yeah, you yeet the hell out of that rock. Why not? Rock! And it doesn't decrease the file size, so no. It, uh, you're going to have to store that somewhere, right? Polygons are not as heavyweight as you would think, but they are not free. Uh, how are UVs handled with extreme high poly nanite? Uh, same way, uh, just like this, uh, you know, your UV map here. So if you go in here to UV map morph UV, 
So here's the UVs on this thing. Uh, essentially, kind of like the 18 million polygons, you UV, you know, whatever, basically whatever photo scan gave you, or I guess if you go through and do the low res UV unwrap and then just subdivide high res and decimate. Um, same deal, you just get some decent UVs and then uh, that's what Nanite ends up inheriting, I think. Um, uh, yeah, so, well, yeah, Nanite is UV'd with a texture. It's not, I don't, I don't know that it can do just straight up vert. I mean, you can do vert color, but I don't know that Nanite does. Although, now that I say that, hell, maybe that would be, that'd probably be cheaper. <laughs> hmm. I don't know about real-time cheaper, though. Because, yeah, textures are expensive as hell. Hmm. I don't know. I'll look into that. Uh, Megan's not free to use it. In real engine, you know if you can use a standalone bridge to bring assets and other software processing with something UE at the end of the way. We just need a paid license for that. You know they do bring that up in the EULA for Quixel. I think as long as it ends up in Unreal, don't quote me on this. If you get sued into oblivion, it's not my fault. But I think as long as it ends up in Unreal, you can change the source as needed. And then as if you're just publishing your result in Unreal, then you're good to go. Uh, System is 5 with 18 million. Where do you top out? 80. Ooh. You know, I think ZBrush can handle, as far as like, you know, usability versus will it load? I think you're right. I think it'll load, you know, whatever my max is underneath preferences, like, you know, 100 million per sub tool. But as far as like, oh, can I just go in and sculpt and move and like have a file save that takes 15 minutes and then an undo that takes five minutes? Ooh, that's when it gets nastier, so. Um, do UVs really matter for a rock? Would UV master be enough? Yeah, I think so. Unless you need to put your seam somewhere specific, but like if hiding a seam on here, just, I don't know. That seems like overkill. Cool. Okay. So, uh, we got our baseball. Uh, let's go in here to subtool, delete all. Uh, how are we doing on time? Okay. We got a little bit of time left. So we have a baseball here and damn it. I'm a character artist. So let's think about this. Let's go in here to floor and we do have some chisel brushes. So BC brush chisel 3D and go in here to M. We're going to grab an ear, and I'm going to pull from this side here. We're just going to pull out an ear here, and then let's grab, what else we got in here? Any facial features? How, how weird can we get with this? <laughs> uh, yeah, that'll work. M, uh, mouth, yes. Yes! Oh my god. Uh, okay, let me think about this. So, right now, this is just a subdivided mesh. And if we wanted to, we could UV this. Um, however, we're going to run into some fidelity issues because I'm basically trying to pull this uh, geometry into this mesh. And in fact, I wonder if I turn off X symmetry. And, uh, yeah, so we can have... Okay, okay, now what we need to do is give me a second baseball bat uh-huh uh-huh images let's find a good baseball bat uh that one seems just dandy oh this one's a good one save image as thank you walmart to my desktop here ah web p and your jip files and your ah there's so many weird file things as open image in new tab hmm there we go save image as yeah webp you know what fine i'm just gonna grab it so many incompatible uncompatible now this is a louisville slugger youth t-ball shape i just like the kind of cartoony look of it so we're gonna say um share file onto my desktop as bat okay now texture Import, uh, desktop, date modified, bat, texture, grab it, quick save. Uh, okay, we're going to start with something like a cylinder. Uh, maybe not a cylinder with that many spans. So we're going to go down to initialize. Now, there's two initializes. One when you make a proper... What 
of these things? Primitive? Uh, there's an initialized primitive down here. So now we can go through here and say, you know what? I only need maybe 12 divides and then we'll just put in four. And then this will be the start of our object. So we'll say make polymesh 3D and we're gonna switch this out to skin shader four. So I'll go to standard brush. Um, and then back in our textures here, we're gonna say, hey, add this bat to our spotlight. This baseball we don't need anymore. And then we're gonna scale this down a little bit. So we're gonna match this overall bat shape. So because this is a cylinder, same thing for weapons, you know that you know that's, that's you, you can already tell the top down profile because this is a perfectly cylindrical object. It's not squished. So we can say, you know what, we'll start here and you know, we'll go in here to show. So movie timeline show, we'll drag this off. We'll put in a new dot and we'll turn off show. For people just joining us, that is underneath movie. Like I say, movie timeline show. So now uh, hold down control alt and we're gonna hit just to unmask those and we're gonna hold down, uh, you know what, we're just gonna pull through here and then as we kind of hit this point here, we're gonna stop and control down control and we're gonna keep dragging. And I'm gonna do a uniform scale because again, this is gonna be still gonna be perfectly round as we change our shape. So control drag out a little bit more, uniform scale, control drag out some more, uniform scale, control drag out some more, uniform scale. Control drag out. And every time we control drag, we're just putting in a new span basically. And then as we get up here, this is where we'll control it, we'll uniformly scale back out. And then uh, now we need to figure out how we're gonna cap these things. So on this side, we can hold down control shift and drag. Let's switch that to select rectangle. So we basically take this top off, control shift, drag, geometry, modify topology, delete hidden. And then now we can go through here with our Z model brush, hover over an edge, close, convex hole, and then just click and drag and you can pull out and up and that'll add, that'll change the resolution and then also the height. So you can kind of match that. Over here, um, let's do this. Let's first of all, we can go through here. We can say insert multiple edge loops, keep polygroup, interactive elevation. And then when I click and pull, we can bow, bow it out or we can squeeze it in a little bit. So you can kind of go through and refine that with here. And in fact, that's fine. Now. Think, think, think. I'm gonna hold down Control, Alt, W, Control, drag this out. And then we're gonna go through here. I'm gonna use my Z Modeler brush. Poly group, poly loop. I'm gonna make this its own poly group. You can just tap Alt just to change that. And then we'll go through here. We'll say Q mesh, poly group ball. And we'll just Q mesh this out. Um, now I can take this outer edge and we can slide. Edge loop complete. We're just gonna slide this in and we're gonna slide this in. And does that make that overall shape? Maybe. Let me think about this. Yeah, that'll work. Um, one more thing you could do. So I'm going to do Shift Z, um, Control N. Uh, you could go in here again, just like we did before. Insert multiple edge loops, interactive elevation, and you can go through here and like round out what you need, and you just tap to make that the same. Um, same thing with this, you could put a big old bevel on there and then again round it out, but I think that's generally what we were looking for. So I'm gonna hit Control W, make this all one poly group here. Um, it looks like there might be a crease that semi holds this. So we're gonna say crease edge loop complete. We're just gonna manually crease that edge. Um, I don't think any other creases are really needed. So I'm gonna hit D for dynamic and we're just gonna do a crease level. So I'll show you where it is, geometry. Uh, so you can do like a crease, by default, it's crease level of 15. So you can be it's like, oh, that's a really harsh crease right there. But you can say, you know what, give me a crease level of one and then a smooth subdiv of two, which is default. And that'll actually keep it creased for one subdivision. And then when it subdivides again, it's gonna uncrease all and that'll give you a little softer fall off. Um, and actually now that I look at this here, it looks like it does hold that edge a little bit better. So while I'm in this mode, so if you do shift D, you're gonna see, when it averages these verts, it's really gonna pull these verts down because there's the only thing holding that shape is this edge loop right here. So if I hit D for dynamic, it'll be like, oh, it really shrinks. No problem, just go in here, insert single edge loop. And as I pull an edge loop towards there, it's gonna hold that edge a little bit better. Of course, you can also crease that edge if you wanted to and then do a fall off, but I think that'll hold it okay. So here's our bat, yay. Um, uh, yeah, that's fine. So we have a bat. I'm gonna go back to my baseball. I'm going to append. And you know how old I am? I watched Beavis and Butthead, Frog Baseball. Let me do bat and ball. When it first was on liquid television MTV. 
Like I was 3,000 years ago. Uh, okay, so a baseball is a little bit bigger than that swell. Which surprisingly is about the size that I have here. So we're gonna say, maybe scale this down just a bit here, boom. So now when I go and I do my, um, <laughs> this has got to be one of either the stupidest thing I've ever made or maybe the best thing I've ever made. I, time will tell. So we've got a baseball here and he's getting hit by this bat here. So I'm going to change the pivot, just alt tap that pivot and we can just kind of just push that right in here. And I can have, I can try and have this ball just kind of wrap around. Um, maybe you can even use claw simulation so that, uh, and you know what, I am going to scale this bat down just a little bit because I want this ball to be just exaggerated. You remember in the old days, back in the frog baseball liquid MTV liquid television days, you would get the was it trapper keeper or everything was like this extreme uh, X dash treme um, of just like super, the focal length of the camera was just like super fisheye. You'd have like a kid like, I don't know, dunking a basketball or kicking a soccer ball. And it was just like super exaggerated, beautifully painted. Um, let me see, extreme 90s advertising. That's, as I see this, that's kind of what I'm kind of, yes, exactly. This is exactly what I was remembering. This super exaggerated uh, fisheye. Again, like super well painted. Like, yeah, I remember, yeah, it was these no rules, extreme branding of the 90s. Yes. Now, this was a little after Garbage Pail Kids. That was a different era. I was alive for that, too. Uh, yeah, like you're eating pizza and Tony's Pizza. Look at this. It's extreme. He's t timing himself. No, he's playing, <laughs> he's playing a audio while he's eating a pizza. Uh, yeah, so. I don't know, something like that. Uh, if you want to change in it to an extreme version of this, you would go in here to draw and you would change your focal length up, up, focal length up. Oh, we need perspective on, duh. Um, so that'll kind of give you, although now that I'm changing this, it's not really doing much because, oh, down, down's what I want, sorry. Um, so that'll make it a little more extreme, although granted this, there's not a whole lot going in here depth wise, so it's not going to change that much. So we'll go back here to draw. We'll switch it back to 50. I think that's what it was and we'll turn perspective off. Okay, uh, back here. Uh, aims to use vert color, replace albedos, utilize RGB, even just story of cavity this or something. That sounds awesome. Like if, because textures are expensive. A geometry, if they can figure that out, um, that's real, that'd be really cool. Um, Ninja Baseball Batman for the arcade. Now that sounds promising. Images. Ninja Baseball Batman. How did this escape? <laughs> what is this? How did I miss this? Good graphics? Interesting. <laughs> Um, cartoony baseball heads. Yes. Excellent. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I see it. And that's kind of that super cartoony look too. That's excellent. You know what? Now that I mentioned that, if this is just going to be like, uh, what's that orange, uh, that old internet thing where the orange has a little face on it. That's fine. However, I need to borrow a little bit. So we're going to hit control and we're going to hit quick save. Damn, I'm not on my own channel, so I can't extend this out. Uh, we're going to hit comma key, go in here to tools, and we're going to go into our Ryan King's anatomy model, and we're going to steal some teeth, because I'm going to bust some teeth out of there, because he just got hit by a baseball bat in the back of his head. Um, so we're going to drag this out. We're going to go into edit mode. We're going to go into solo, and we're going to steal. Uh, you know what? I'm going to steal the whole skull. So we're going to hold down control shift, go into select lasso, grab all these pieces, control shift A, visibility grow all, geometry modified topology, delete hidden. And that's fine. Uh, you know what? I'm actually going to go in here to delete other, just so I'm not taking up space in my f seam. So go in here. We're going to append this entire skull here. And then we're going to go to solo mode F. And I'm going to say unify. Nope. Grab the skull and unify this. So now I'll put it in the center of our scene. And then we can kind of line up, you know, where 
these teeth would end up going and the lower jaw. Uh, so for example, the skull is going to be upper teeth here. Scale this out. And you know what, we'll get rid of the bat. That, that can come in later. So we've, <laughs> and it looks like, we'll turn off back symmetry because I, you know, a little, little jaunty angle on the teeth here. So I'm just gonna make these teeth generally fit in his mouth here, like so. And then we're gonna grab the lower jaw. So uh, right now it's all one piece. I'm gonna again go to the side here, control shift drag over bottom jaw on the teeth, control shift A. We can hit control W, make it its own poly group. Or we could even just split this off into its own subtool. I'm gonna move this down so it hinges at the jaw. Not that it needs to be scientific for goodness sake. And then we'll just open this up and then I'll put this here so we can kind of see the lower teeth in there. Alrighty. Now we do need a little bit of expression. And for that, I'm gonna use my own face. So here's my mirror. This is great for blend shapes and facts. So I'm gonna put this over here. And I'm gonna be making this face. Uh, uh. and that'll give me enough reference that I need. Okay, so we got the teeth we need. I'm gonna go through here, grab the skull, control shift A, control shift drag, delete hidden, this one here, grab the lower jaw, delete hidden. Uh, if I need gums, I can go through there and make what I need, but now I've got, oops, let's turn off topological. So we can just go through here and kind of move this around. So now we have a baseball head. I'm gonna scooch this down and back. Um, I'm going to go through here and we're going to say, I'm going to kind of, what kind of face would you be making like, uh, I also have, you know what, ah, it's not downloaded. I have an expression bundle pack for an enemy 360 I could use, but okay, I'm just going to kind of furrow those brows. So Damien standard X symmetry turned on. Yeah, okay, we got symmetry. So I'm gonna go through here. I'm gonna kind of punch in you know, this kind of shape and maybe give him some eyelids underneath. He's, he's, his eyes are kind of bugging out, which I kind of love. It's not how I would normally make things, but he's got, an, he's got a look going for him. So I, happy accident, I guess, or I'll tell myself that. You know, and I can even, eh, that's fine. Uh, so we've got this, we've got the lips. Uh, Go ahead and smooth this out a little bit, maybe. Um, uh, and we don't really have a labial fold for He doesn't have a nose, but we can kind of dial in one, maybe. And I'm going to go back in here with my clay buildup. Or, you know what? We'll just do something soft. We'll just use our clay brush to kind of go through here. And hold on Shift, turn down, my, turn down my Z intensity. By default, I have Smooth Stronger turned on, so you'll see me, maybe more than others, turning down my Smooth Intensity. Um, just to kind of dial in what I need. And then through here, let's go to our damn standard O2 brush and we'll kind of put in a little bit of wrinkles here just to kind of, and we can even have this kind of, these wrinkles kind of play around with the stitches over here. So let's turn down our Z intensity on our standard brush and we'll kind of have this kind of work its way in here. I'm going to turn off X symmetry and we'll kind of Again, have these kind of interact just a tiny, 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 tiny bit here. Okay, so we've got this. We've got clay buildup. We're gonna. And so whenever I'm doing props, um, even rocks and stuff. In fact, if you want more on rocks, it's not great, but it's something. Um, oops, art station me. I wrote a time lapse of this thing so instead of just making an island you know take a skull skull island and turn it into a rocky outcropping with you know again it's not great it's just a really quick um you know taking the skull if you want to know how to make the skull that's on youtube as well that's um, a video series i have a playlist you can go and make your own actually that's not true it's on gumroad uh, or cube brush or flip normals wherever you want to buy my stuff um i forgot um but yeah, so rocks. Okay, so let's get back over here. Um, let's see, scroll up. Again, if I miss something, I apologize. I don't do it on purpose. 
Um, UV Master starts struggling, you go 150k. Yeah, that's where it would be. Like, yeah, go down to a low subdivision level, UV that, and then subdivide, project, subdivide, project, subdivide, project, so that your UVs transfer to the higher res, if that's, if you're able to do that. Um, I'm 41? Sad, isn't it? Um, 41, making this thing. Uh, scan, re apologize, yeah. Um, <laughs> perfect. I recommended this video how to get to use the create base forms of the head anatomy tutorials. Uh, get, oh, get used to creating the base forms of the head and anatomy. Um, God, unfortunately my channel's not gonna be great at that because I don't do a ton of anatomy stuff. Occasionally I will, so under YouTube, facial anatomy not so much. Anatom anatomy. Um, I will say, having said that, so if you just Google anatomy, we do go into anatomy a little bit. I did do, um, I took a Scott Eaton course. It was really good. If you ever want to be like just humbled <laughs> by somebody with anatomy, Scott Eaton's the man to do it. Uh, let me see, going here to recording. Um, and not that I'm humbled because I don't know anything, but for those of you who think you know something, um, go take his course. In, in a good way. I, I don't mean that in a negative way. It's, it's an incredible course. Um, and it's also different too because how I learn things in my head, a lot of people will say, and it, if it works for you, great. I'm, 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 uh, I'm jealous. But they'll say like, hey, simply uh, go draw the, go through Bridgman and draw those drawings, and then it'll just, you'll just be an amazing anatomist. And that's not the case with me specifically. I need more than that, and that's why the, <laughs> say this, this class really helped me. The the the, the full body anatomy class, and then all those facial anatomy class. However, even for me, I have to learn, apply, and when doing that process, I'll retain five percent, and then I've got to go back and learn and apply again and then I'll learn an extra 5%. And I keep doing that, and eventually it'll it'll peter off as well. Eventually, I, I think all I'll really retain is probably like 60% maximum, um, just because, I don't know, genetics, I guess. But um, you can use ZBrush to help you out there too. So here's just a generic skull, you know? So here's the generic uh, scan data skull from like 1024. And then also a 1024 scan data, um, you know, just a head that I grabbed. So here's the overall head, so we can turn the head on. So here's the head, and then as I'm going through and learning, uh, being able to use ZBrush to kind of go through here, let's turn on PolyPaint, to kind of go through here and just kind of break things down into, you know, where they go, where the masseter goes inside of this little skull right here, that little, little nook. Um, you know, going through and painting and labeling as needed, and then obviously with the face, more than anything, is the fat on your face really dictates all the superficial anatomy really dictates how the face looks so anyway using zbrush to kind of supplement you know your your knowledge here um, and even there uh, so that's kind of this one but then here's the skull simplified so if i go over here and i turn on render transparency render properties transparent polyframe line off bpr render and Skin Shader 4. So you can, I can use this as kind of a guide. I can like match it up and go in here and like see through or use, um, I don't have a head here. Uh, I can use this to kind of match somebody's uh, photograph and then I can go through and kind of just, I don't know, be thinking about like how the skull is constructed um, like so. So I can get better at drawing in the round as opposed to sculpting the round, which is a lot easier because <laughs> it's kind of built in. Um, and then I have more stuff here. Uh, what else do I got in here? Just little um, head and neck, hands, arms, legs. Even taking the like I, like we pulled in the Ryan King's line anatomy model. Just taking that and then going in here and just subdividing, labeling stuff, just to remind myself. And again, you can use this to overlay actual anatomy uh, or real people, and then remind yourself like, oh yeah, that's what all those little bumps mean, right? However, having said that, uh, getting that to stick in my brain is a lot different. So delete all, delete all, uh, but whatever works for you, I guess is the, is the long and short of it. So got this and this. Now, speaking of that anatomy model, I'm gonna go through here with these teeth and I'm gonna say uh, zero mesh or same just to get some decent geometry and I'll do double. And then I'm gonna go in here that's ah, not really working. Um, let's subdivide 
you know what, let's turn off. So geometry, I'm gonna turn off the smooth modifier so when I divide, it'll add more geometry but won't melt the shape. Uh, then I'm gonna do, you know what, we'll divide one more time and then I'm gonna go in here to deformation and we'll just do a, just tap polish by features a couple times and then I'll do zero mesh or half, oops. Half. I'm just getting some decent geometry on these teeth so they're a little bit more malleable and then I'm gonna go in here with my move brush X symmetry off and I'm gonna go down here to auto masking and we're gonna to say topological range 1.5 so anything that's not vert welded or part of the same object and go in here and move them independently so I can kinda of, you know widen these teeth out just a little bit press them up against each other like so and then same deal for this again subdivide the smooth modifier off and then just do a slight polish and then zero mesh half, depth size down to zero. Again, just something a little more usable. Now this one, I might need to bring in some gum geometry and it looks like I kind of busted this thing. So smooth that in where it's supposed to go. So for gums, let's go through here. I'm actually just gonna steal from this. So we'll just do an extract. And in fact, let's go ahead and hold down. We'll go ahead and sculpt in a little bit so we can see these back teeth here. Uh, oh, and a tongue. Uh, I can, I can steal a tongue actually. <laughs> uh, give me a sec. Let's go in here to scan models. Uh, retool, neutral, Z tool, sure. Give me a sec. Yeah, most of the stuff I'm pulling in is from 1024. Scan store. Um, here we go. Teeth. You know, I can grab the teeth from this. Okay, so teeth and tongue. Uh, I could go in here and I could say, uh, copy these in here. So let's do that. Let's go in here to Z plugin, subtool master. I'm going to copy folder. So teeth, and we're gonna put it in here and we're gonna say Z plugin, paste folder, boop, boop. Okay, and then on this one, since this is a pretty heavy file, I'm just gonna say delete all. And in fact, these are a little overkill for me. You're going to see this is, uh, oh, it's not that many polygons, but we're on subdivision level one. So as I increase this, I don't need more than this. I'm going to say delete higher. And then same thing for the teeth. I don't think I need that much. So we'll go up to like subdivision level five. Yeah, it's fine. Delete higher. So now teeth and tongue. I don't know where it is in my scene or what scale it is. So I'm going to go up here to transpose set. And then uh, F to frame, F to frame. Yeah, they're just a little bit tiny. So I'm gonna scale this up just a bit. And since we're transposing the set, we're getting the teeth and the tongue. So again, oops. And this will, be really good for a creepy, uncanny valley, 90s extreme <laughs> render. Uh, so silly, but I kind of love it, sorry. Uh, okay, we got this here, we got our teeth generally in place. So if you don't have access to scan data, by all means, use the Ryan Kingsland stuff. However, I'm gonna go through here. The tongue is sitting in there, great. So that's good, and that's all separate. So for the teeth, these are all, okay, good. I'm gonna say Control Shift, Control Shift A, Mask and Invert, W, Rotate, Turn Off, Move Multiple, and then we'll just match this here. So now this has built-in gums, so you, I could have created my, I was gonna extract a piece of geometry and just use those as gums and push it around, uh, but this has gums built in, so. Good thinking, Mike. I'll pat myself on the back for that one. Good thinking steal geometry from another source. So we're gonna go through here. If you need to, you can turn on transparencies. So you can kind of see, you know, where this tongue needs to go. And again, if we want to kind of pose this tongue, uh, I'm gonna drop this down to like subject level one. And then we can go through here and we can, uh, oh, damn, we have the X symmetry turned on. The um, X symmetry turned off for our tongue, thank you. Okay, so again, move this out, set it in level one, and then we can kind of do what we need to do. So I'm gonna go into solo mode, I'm gonna hold down control. Now if you hit W and control drag, that'll mask along the geometry. So that's helpful. 
and then I'm going to invert that and we're going to rotate this back. So again, this is just going to kind of be out of the way. So we just have this tongue kind of out. And this geometry again can just be just get out of my way. So here's the tongue and uh, again, he's getting smacked pretty hard. So we're just going to kind of twist this around. In fact, we may even be able to go in here too. Um, let's do this. So if I hold down shift and smooth, you're going to see it's not going to touch those borders. That's where smooth cloth comes in. We can go in here to um, min connected, hold down shift, min connected of one, and then it'll smooth those borders here. That's what the smooth cloth does, by the way. So here, W, go in here and we'll say bend, let's do bend curve. Oops, we have sudden history. Um, that's okay. Let's go to sudden level seven. Delete lower temporarily. I hope this doesn't bite me. Go in here to bend curve. And then we can add resolution along here. So now we can go through and kind of bend this thing around. And the cool thing about this is we can go through here and there is a, a scale and twist on here. So each one of these, you have a twist and you have a scale. So I can kind of like go through here and kind of twist that geometry. Granted, I could totally do that just masking and moving. And that's maybe safer because when I'm done, I got to go back through here and reconstruct back down. And I don't know if my UVs are going to stay exactly the same. They seem to be working okay. So that's fine. It just makes me nervous. Okay, so they're in level one through six. And actually we can go one lower, I think. So there's that. Um, Oh yeah, base forms of head anatomy tutorials. So you do have some base forms if you hit the comma key. It's not an it's not a tutorial, so you're not going to learn much from this. But if you need it, you can go in here to project, and there are uh, head planes. So you can start if you're just kind of sculpting. You can start from these head planes, and uh, start from there. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I do have some scan. Uh, speaking of like all the scan data talk uh, on my YouTube channel. Uh, again, if we go to playlists, created playlists, there is a photogrammetry playlist here. It's old, but I think it still is vaguely usable. Um, so reality capture and photo scan uh, stuff in there. Again, that is, um, so here's all the playlists here. And then here's the art station here. Ta-da. Okay. Uh, get back. Let's go to yes, yes. Uh, annoying orange. Yep, that's what it was. Um, oh, yeah, and let's get rid of those teeth here. So this tooth here, deleted and deleted. Okay, so we got our thing here. And then again, if we wanted to, what we could do, it might be kind of interesting. So I'm going to take my bat here, and we're just going to kind of have that sitting in space. And then I'm going to take my baseball, because um, I can't move multiple, but I think I can scooch those around because essentially what I want to do is let's duplicate this head off and let's show the bat so if I take this head here and we'll go ahead and turn off the teeth <laughs> so if I take this and I go to uh, how many yeah it's too many so let's drop and I don't want the wrinkles that fine so we're gonna go to like subdivision level three or four let's try three uh, B T C for transpose cloth uh, underneath dynamics, we need to tell it that this right here is a collision volume. So we'll go ahead and just turn that off and turn it back on. Uh, gravity, we don't need. And I'm just going to, eh, I'll change the firmness down to back down to two. So as I move this back, uh, it'll kind of just impact with the bat. Of course, that is way out there. So as I move this in, it's going to hit the bat and kind of, boom, ah. um, so again, if I don't want the wrinkles that fine, I can go through here and I can say, um, either change my subdivision level, so subdivision level 2 will be less geometry and my wrinkles won't be as intense, or I could go up here to firmness and crank that up with higher resolution. Um, depends on what you want to see. So I can go through here and just kind of bump that into the bat here, so he's just getting smashed, blow, uh, right against that bat. And if we want to frame this so we can see it, uh, maybe something like this. So we'll go back up to level five. Now the problem is, stitches didn't move move with it. But since I just moved it straight back, I should be able to line those up pretty easily. Okay, and then the stitches will kind of just be what they are. So I'm going to go back in here real quick and let's kind of massage 
these stitches here. And we could even go through here and like split some of these and fray them. Uh, we do need to do that on an individual basis, maybe going in here and doing like an auto group. So each one gets its own poly group. And then I can say W control tap this one and then literally just like rotate this out. Um, and same thing with this one, W control tap this one. And we'll just blah. So as this thing, it like somebody really walloped this thing, control tap, rotate our axis, split these out. One more, control tap here, W, split out, there we go. So now, tells a little bit more of a story, right? Um, yeah, so we got that, we got the head, we got the teeth. Uh, we don't need this original, I don't think. I, yeah, you can keep it around if you want to. Just, you know what, we can do a incremental saves, everybody. What are we doing today? We're streaming, and this is going to be new folder, baseball head, baseball head 01. If I ever need it, it's sitting in there in this version of the file, and I'll delete this out of my scene here. Oh, yeah, and the teeth too. So as we move the teeth and tongue back, again, we're going to say we want to move both of these. So again, transpose set, and uh, we'll go ahead and reset this here so we can just move this again straight back like so. And uh, yeah, I think we're in good shape. So we've got that. We've got our little uvula back there. We can swing out of the way maybe. I'll go in here and inflate. There we go. Okay, we're at time. Eight o'clock. Um, and shatters to the teeth. Yes. Okay, we're not quite done yet. So here's part of the problem with these teeth in, in particular is they're all kind of built in. So the King's Line teeth, I wouldn't have this problem. So in this instance, what I might have to do, and I'm going to, hmm, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go down here like we did before. And we're going to say, first of all, let's go in here to Skin Shader 4. And we're just going to say Material, Color, Fill Object. Same thing with the Tongue, Color, Fill Object, just because it's a little more, a little better looking. There we, ah, oh, come on. Um, material, Material, RGB Intensity, Color, Color. Fill object with that material, please. That's yeah, not going to do it. Oh, you know why? I, maybe. Uh, so, okay. We're going to go to the highest subdivision level because I want to have a little bit more flexibility with these teeth. So I'm going to go down here to poly paint. We're going to say poly paint from texture and then alt tap the tongue. Again, we want to get all that detail. So subdivision, highest subdivision level, uh, poly paint. Although the tongue we can probably leave alone. We're going to go poly paint from texture and then now, uh, now we're able to go through here, I think, and say color fill object with material turned on and it will stick. Yes. Okay. Color. Uh, and again, if I needed to change anything on here, now that it's poly paint, uh, I can go in here and say, you know what, poly paint uh, adjust colors. And I can say, you know what, I want it to be a little more saturated red, maybe. Okay. Color M. object okay so anyway so now this is just uh, I don't need the textures anymore so the textures should be uh, turned off in fact I can completely get rid of them they don't need to take up space in my scene so when I save this it'll be an even smaller scene so we have this here and get this out of the way uh, brush auto masking topological off there we go so now flying teeth because it's just geometry now and I don't need to worry about UVs. Um, let's go ahead. I'm going to delete this folder. I don't know if you need to transpose these anymore. So I'm going to say delete folder and then think about this. I want to pop that tooth out. So I'm going to say duplicate this off, go into solo mode and let's see, I do have poly groups on here. So I'm going to do control shift. We're going to say delete lower, close holes. Oops, sorry. Delete lower, delete hidden, close holes, uh, W, control tap this, a uh, little section of the poly group here. And again, I'm doing this because the C teeth aren't separated. If you were using the Ryan King's line stuff, you don't need to worry about that. Oh, BTR to transpose regular again. I'm going to go through here 
and um, just kind of make this into a tooth. Now, I want to make sure that polypaint is turned on if I was to go in here and just grab, like turn this into a Dynamesh, just so I don't lose my Dynamesh. In fact, we can even tap C, uh, standard brush RGB turned on, and we can just fill that in with a color. So this tooth here, um, I think when, let me see, tooth, tooth, looks something like, like this, maybe, or just like two little prongs, uh, front tooth. Sorry, everybody. Trigger warning. Um, we'll just do, I don't know. I don't know exactly how many prongs, so BSH for snake hook. We can go through here, and we can literally just go, here's one, here's two, like so. Shift to smooth, control drag. And now we've got kind of a, a raw nerve endings. Ren and Stimpy, that was another big one when I was growing up. Anybody remember the Tooth Fairy? Was it the Tooth Fairy? Um, really disturbing episode. <laughs> About nerve ending, it was a nerve ending fairy, sorry. Uh, so Z add, Alt, Shift Smooth. Oh, Shift Smooth, you can also turn off RGB, so it just smooths your geometry, not your poly paint. And then now, we have one tooth that we can say, okay, boom, split this out, and it's going to go flying, right? Of course, we have to have a corresponding, or it can just like barely be like separating out from the cavity there. Now, the good news is, again, we can go back into our teeth, control shift tap this one, geometry modified topology. Let's go ahead and say uh, delete lower, uh, delete hidden, close holes. Hmm. Actually, what we might have to do, wish me luck, everybody. We're going to go in here just to this one edge, and we're going to say close concave hole. So we're just going to tap that there and just close just that hole because it wants to close these top ones, and I don't know what it's doing. So, uh, And then control shift tap this, mask invert, and then now we can add a little bit of a cavity for this tooth here. And like I said, we're just going to sample. So C, isolate, fill with that color, shift to smooth. And in this case, I might go in here and hold down shift and then turn on RGB just so we can smooth geometry and color, uh, which seems to be doing not a great job. So we'll say C, Alt, Standard Brush, Paint. Oh, you know why? Because, so if you drag from your material, you can sample what material. We just need to do um, M, color, fill object. I think, RGB, yeah, there we go, turn off RGB. Okay, and again, you could just Dynamesh this, but I kind of want to keep things nice. So there's our cavity for our tooth, and then here's our tooth flying out, and then here's our startup material with our tooth, and then this tooth, of course, needs um, Skin Shader 4, M, Color, Fill Object. All right, that's it, everybody. I think we're in good shape. Do what do the storytelling we need to do for this tooth to be exploding out of here. Maybe have a little nerve ending trailing back or whatever. Um, got our little wrinkly head here. Perspective. I don't know. <laughs> Something. Okay. Um, cool. Uh, am I always serious? I guess I am. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Fair enough, Nazumi. Um, yes, that's true. It's a lot easier to make stuff whenever, because always in the back of my head when I'm live streaming, I'm like, people are watching me do this, so something. Um, Insides do not have prongs. Damn. Well, let me do a little more research on that. Although I will say, depending on what the audience expects, um, I don't know, maybe fudge it a little bit. Rule of cool. Cool, yes, I'll be on my channel Thursday. So, um, cool. Awesome. Thanks, everybody. Uh, thank you everybody and uh, like I said I'll see you on my channel on Thursday uh, take it easy get some rest everybody.